cold evening in Nevada's high desert for the inaugural Las Vegas Bowl. Champions of the MAC in the Big West. Bowling Green has Eric White, the rangy senior quarterback. Nevada has Chris Vargas, a relief pitcher, off the bench to lead a dramatic comeback to get the Wolfpack here in their first year in 1A. The bowl season underway. 36 teams and 18 bowl games will close out the season and begin the new year. The bowls inevitably produce pageantry and some surprises. We'll take a look at the three high-impact New Year's Day games. In the Sugar Bowl, of course, Heisman Trophy winner Gino Toretta will lead top-ranked Miami in the National Championship showdown against Alabama. In the Cotton Bowl, Texas A&M, unbeaten, untied, still searching for respect, will battle Notre Dame just maybe a piece of the national title pie at stake. And the Orange Bowl, Butkus winner Marvin Jones will lead third-ranked Florida State against Nebraska, the Seminoles also with faint title dreams. And now, the kickoff show with your host, Chris Fowler. And hello, welcome once again to the kickoff show. As always, the coach, Lee Corso, is joining me and nestled among the abundant pine needles here, Gary Danielson, filling in for Craig James tonight. Hey, I feel perfectly comfortable. My whole <laughs> career, I've been coming off the bench, and hey, I'll do all right. That's right, we got the Hoosier and the Boiler making it tonight. <laughs> Boilers won the bucket. All right, we're going to take an overview of the boils, uh, bowl season, starting with the, uh, the big one in the Sugar Bowl, the Hurricanes and the Tide for the national championship, one versus two, the first one versus two bowl game in five years. You know, Chris, when you have two great teams like Miami and Alabama playing, you look for some subtle differences to try to pick the winner. In one area, game breakers, guys that make the big play. Alabama has David Palmer. He's an exciting weapon. But the advantage, I think, goes to Miami with Kevin Williams. He's hot. He's coming along great at the end of the year. He can beat you three ways. He's a great runner. As he shows against San Diego State, he's got excellent concentration and catching the ball in the clutch with people around and yes he can throw the ball on the reverse i wouldn't be surprised to see this early in the bowl game now kevin williams also returns punts and gary i think miami has a tremendous advantage when it comes to the offensive big play guys well i agree with that lee but you've coached defense produces big plays too and bama has a good defense copeland and curry i think the big plays for bama are going to come from those two guys I like their position. Penn State at Arizona has shown you can win with defense versus Miami if you can kick a field goal. If they don't get big <laughs> defensive plays, they're not in this ballgame. Antonio Langham, the two interception returns for touchdowns against Auburn and Florida. Now, the Cotton Bowl. Texas A&M, R.C. Slocum and company not getting the team they wanted. That would have been Florida State. Instead, they get Notre Dame, and that's no bargain either. No, it isn't, but they've got a quarterback that's doing some things. Corey Pollock, he's only a freshman, but Bucky Richardson beat Notre Dame as a freshman, and I think with his arm and strength, the way he's running this team, he's exuding confidence out there. If his team can play as well as he can, I think Lee, they can beat Notre Dame in this game. Not so fast, my friend, not so <laughs> fast. I agree with you, though. Bowling is the key to their offensive team, but don't forget also that Texas A&M plays great defense, especially against the run. But Holtz and Notre Dame are stubborn. They'll attack A&M right at them, and they'll have some success. But the key to Notre Dame's win, if they get it, will be play action passes by Rick Meyer, throwing the ball deep against the secondary. I think Notre Dame will score, and maybe a lot, against A&M. I wouldn't feel at home if we didn't have disagreement on the set, even with James not here. Nebraska and Florida State in the Orange Bowl. The Huskers, for once, don't get Miami. The last three trips down to the Orange Bowl, they got the Canes in their home field, but they get Florida State maybe playing as well as anyone right now. And, you know, Chris, you hit it right on the nose when you say they didn't want to play them, but I tell you what, they got this team that they want to play where they got them. Nebraska has to take the ball and run first and tens, keep Charlie Ward off the sideline, and make sure that they ball control him because Marvin Jones is the key to Florida State's attack. He's an all-world linebacker. Now, notice he likes to attack from the inside, from the outside. He, he plays excellent pass defense. I like him. One other thing about him, watch him attack across the line of scrimmage. This makes him a great linebacker. Remember, Marvin Jones, as a junior, Gary, has already won the Lombardi. He's always won the Butkus. I think this is his last game as a Florida State Seminole in the Orange Bowl. I'm doing something wrong here. I'm agreeing with you again. <laughs> I've seen uh, Marvin Jones play for three years now. He's an outstanding football player. He's the best inside linebacker I've seen. He's going to go top five in the draft. Best inside linebacker to come out since Mike Singletary. Yeah, Dennis Erickson says he's the best linebacker he's ever seen in college football. So ball control for Nebraska, it sounds real good, Lee, but... Very tough to do against the speed of Florida State's defense. Nobody has ball controlled them up and down the field. All right, we're going to talk about some other bowl games when we come back on the kickoff show, including the Rose Bowl, a rematch without much of the glamour of last year. Off the field problems for Washington, ties for Michigan. We'll kick that around the other New Year's Day when we continue.
holiday greetings from Budweiser. The people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. Where in the world can you find a castle, tigers, the black hole, glamour, romance, neon, a volcano, more neon, feathers, a cabaret, a tropical island, more romance, and superstar after superstar after superstar, only in Las Vegas. ESPN's college football season goes out with flying colors in a bowl week extravaganza. The nation's top teams are put to the test beginning December 29th. Thrifty Car Rental Bowl Week on ESPN. The Kickoff Show is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. With that fresh, pure, natural taste, nothing beats a Bud. And the Las Vegas Bowl coming up in just a couple of minutes. Back to the New Year's Day Bowl games. We've talked about the three high-impact games. There are five other games on a crowded New Year's Day. Starting with the Fiesta Bowl. They, of course, had a chance for that one-versus-two showdown. Their consolation prize is a good matchup. Colorado and Syracuse filled with brilliant offensive players on both sides. The Buffs, Cordell Stewart, hooking up with Charles Johnson. The Orangemen have uh, Marvin Graves, but also two good defenses. Could be lower scoring than most people think. Blockbuster, Stanford versus Penn State. Joe Paterno is 14-7-1 in the bowl games and don't forget he won a national title against miami in the fiesta bowl bill walsh is undefeated in bowl games plus he's won three super bowls how about the rose bowl washington and michigan a rematch without the luster and this is vindication time for elvis gerbeck he was pressured into poor performance last year he's been waiting for a whole year for this game the florida citrus bowl in beautiful downtown orlando <laughs> georgia versus ohio state Georgia features the quarterback, Eric Zire, who fakes the Garrison Hurst and throws to all-world wideout Andre Hastings. These are three of the best athletes in America on one team. It's Georgia's offense versus Ohio State defense. The Hall of Fame Bowl. Tennessee and Boston College, two excited teams, one with a new coach and one with a new experience playing in a bowl game. Key to this game, that man right there, Chucky Dukes. Notre Dame shut him down, and they couldn't score. He's the key to the game. Vocal Tennessee fans wanted Philip Fulmer. They wanted Johnny Majors out. They have Fulmer coaching this bowl game. Don't expect many changes. He does the same things. He's calling the plays for Tennessee. The bowl games, because they're different than regular season games, often produce upsets. You see any upsets? Well, I do. I've already predicted a and is going to win one. I think Michigan's going to win. But, of course, I don't have to come back here. <laughs> That's my line. He doesn't have to come back and justify me. He throws him up, right? We've got plenty of time yeah, to talk like about it. bowls. All right. When we come up, we'll talk about the, uh, the Las Vegas Bowl, though. Nevada and Bowling Green coming up from beautiful downtown Las Vegas. Lee Orlando doesn't have a downtown. We'll come back in a minute. <laughs> Gotta find that girl in Jordan's jeans Prettiest girl I ever seen Oh, slow down, baby, you got that look Yeah, the way you shake really got me shook sure. Gotta find that girl in Jordan's jeans When we build a Maglite flashlight, we craft the body from a single piece of aircraft aluminum. We seal and gem with high gray rubber O-ring. We give it a patented self-cleaning switch and a patented adjustable beam. The Maglite flashlight. Brighter. Tougher. Made in America. Flawlessly engineered. The Maglite is a work of art that works. This holiday season, give the gift of light with a Maglite flashlight. And welcome back. The Las Vegas Bowl replacing what was the California Raisin Bowl, matching the MAC against the Big West. How do you see this game tonight, Bowling Green and Nevada? Well, you know, Bowling Green's got an outstanding football team, especially in the fact that they play a tough schedule. They've only lost two games this year, Ohio State and Wisconsin. But with those casinos and those <laughs> bright lights in Vegas, I think the Ohio guys will stumble around early. I think they're going to have problems early, but I think Bowling Green wins by 10 points. 
Gary, and I think they win it because of superior size and strength up front. Have you ever been to Bowling Green? There's plenty of bright nights there. They're, they're going to come out rolling. I mean, this is a chance for the MAC to gain some vindication for their conference. I mean, they've been downgraded all year. I lost to Bowling Green when I was at Purdue. Purdue lost again to Toledo this year, Central Michigan against Michigan State. I think, you know, you throw out Texas A&M and Texas out of the Southwest Conference, the MAC is better than the Southwest Conference. Wait a minute. Craig, wait a minute. Sorry, Craig, Craig, see what you get from missing? You better hurry, you better hurry back and support that Southwest Conference. I don't agree with you, but hey, it's worth giving James a touch, even though he's not here. You're not suggesting you're going to give the edge in the game on who's done better at the tables all week, are you? No, I'm not. I would. I even mentioned that, but also another point about it, Bowling Green is in exams, and that's psychologically hurting them. Certainly. We're going to uh, see what happens. Las Vegas uh, up next. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Charlie Knox. We're back at halftime with the halftime blitz. So enjoy the first half from Las Vegas where it is very, very cold, and that could affect the game. We'll see you at halftime. seeking fortunes. Today's dreamers and risk takers come less for nature's sake than for the lure of a city. Football teams have come to town to pursue their dreams. The ace for Bowling Green is senior quarterback and two-time MAC Offensive Player of the Year, Eric White. His favorite target, Mark Slachik, the league's all-time leading receiver. But for luck, how about Nevada's pair of winning quarterbacks? Both equally adept at leading their team's high-powered offense. Brett Gatlin is the starter and the better scrambler of the two. Chris Vargas provides the comeback magic off the bench. For both, the big play man has been the Big West phenom, Brian Reeves. ESPN presents the 1992 Las Vegas Bowl, which pits the champions of the Big West Conference against the champions of the Mid-American Conference. Tonight, it's the Nevada Wolfpack versus the Bowling Green Falcons. Last night in downtown Las Vegas, they blocked off Fremont Street, right in the heart of the casino district, and they held a huge pep rally for tonight's ball game. Cheerleaders and band members from Nevada and Bowling Green were there, along with their teams. And tonight, the waiting and the words are over. Folks, it's bowl time in Las Vegas. <laughs> Gottfried, and welcome to the entertainment capital of the world. It is football time. A little chilly tonight, unusually cold, in fact, for Las Vegas, Nevada, but number one is on deck, and we're set to play football. Mike, as far as Nevada is concerned, it's really a fairy tale story. This time last year, they're one double A. They moved to Division I, and in their very first year, they win their conference. Here they are right now in a Division I bowl game. Ron, it's all about respect in this football game because they're moving up from Division I double A to Division I, and the key for them tonight is that they can throw the football and throw it successfully their two quarterbacks to Brian Reeves and not allow Bowling Green on the other side of the ball to run the football down their throat with their strong running game. Well, speaking to the Falcons of Bowling Green, they already have a lot of respect as far as the MAC conference is concerned in the Midwest part of the nation. They have not lost a conference game in the last two years. In fact, this season, they finished at 9-2 and two, and the only people to knock them off were Big Ten opponents, Ohio State and Wisconsin. And in their quarterback, Eric White, Nevada, I think he's going to see the best quarterback they've seen certainly all year. Ron, you're right. He's the key to the offense. He's six foot six. He has a strong passing arm. He does a great job of hiding the football with his play action fakes, and he's the key to their offense. And one thing that we don't have to preview, one of these schools has a cannon. We will be back with the starting lineups and tonight's kickoff of this inaugural Las Vegas Bowl right after this. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Las Vegas Bowl is being brought to you by Las Vegas, the entertainment and event capital of the world.
Las Vegas, Nevada, and what you're looking at is the Silver Bowl. That's what the stadium is called. Well, Mike, we have established tonight that both of these teams like to throw the football, and both have outstanding quarterbacks. What about the secondaries? Well, our third person on the telecast tonight is Charlene Hawks, and let's go down to her at Fieldside. Charlene, what about the secondaries? Well, Ron, the secondaries for both teams have established themselves as solid threats to any quarterback hoping to make a connection. In fact, Bowling Green secondary is known as the Killer Bees. Brooks, Bear, Bolinski, and Barres are the reasons why. But the story for Nevada that could be an opening for a Bowling Green blowout is who is not on their secondary. They're missing the guy who makes all the calls and adjustments. Free safety, Xavier Carey, who uh, was suspended today for academic reasons. He's an all-Big West player, and his loss will restrict what the defense can do with their coverages. In particular, it might force them out of some all-out blitzes. Ron? Okay, Charlene, so we'll keep a very close eye on what they do in the secondary tonight, speaking of the Wolfpack of Nevada. Now, how did they get here? Well, first of all, as far as the Wolfpack is concerned, this is the way their season went. They opened up with a loss at Wyoming, then a couple of wins, then a loss, a win, and as they came down the stretch, and you could see a big win over UNLV, 14 to 10, right here in the stadium, they finished the season with victories over Utah State and Texas Southern. And there is the man who directs them. 17 years for Chris Alt and a winning percentage of 71%. Now, what about Bowling Green? How did they get here? This is the way they opened their season. They won over Western Michigan. Then the back-to-back -back losses I talked about in the opening, both to Ohio State and Wisconsin. And Mike, they had six turnovers in both of those ball games. Then they won everything else. They closed it out with eight straight victories. And the guy who leads them over the last couple of years, Gary Blackney, has been just about as good as you can be. No losses in the conference, only two losses this year, 20 and 3 since coming to Bowling Green. That's a pretty good percentage. Pretty good percentage, Ron, and they're going to get the ball first, so Gary Blackney will try to establish the running game. They have a size advantage in the offensive line, establish the running game, play action, passing game with their fine quarterback, Eric White. You could see the tag on the young man standing behind Coach Blackney. Uh, it was really blowing about. One of the things we will keep a close eye on, and in fact, we'll be going down to Charlene to see exactly what it is doing down on the field. But the, for the couple of days that we've been here, the wind in the stadium really whistles around, but it's not necessarily a consistent wind. Since both like to throw the football, some coaches say they'd rather have rain than the wind because of what it does. I don't like wind throwing the football, but ne Nevada throws the ball, Bowling Green will throw it. The only effect I think the wind will have tonight is in the punting game. Well, you look at Lester, who will kick it off for Nevada. Seven and four on the season for them. And they kick off to Bowling Green, who had only two losses. Nine and two, Johnson back deep. 19.6 yards per return. Crowd is on their feet down below, and we are just about set to get this one underway. kicks it away with the win and this will come down to Johnson five yards deep and he'll go down on one knee so here are the starters for Bowling Green now the man that makes it go number seven Eric White 6-6 quarterback MVP in the conference for the last two years that's in the back the, the wide receivers they are very good Slachik is the man that they go to. 82 receptions and seven touchdowns. And up front, an experienced offensive line. But the guy that they call their best offensive lineman is the left tackle, Joe Wise, a 6'5 junior out of Archbold, Ohio. High formation, and they go with the run. Jeb Zeb Jackson, on the very first play from scrimmage, takes it out to the 26-yard line. So let's take a look at the starters for Nevada on defense. The down three, Joe Dunn, is the best of the defensive linemen. They, the coaches say he's the man that makes things happen. The linebacker is very active. An all-conference performer, and he's been a pleasant surprise. Number 92, Steve Bryant. And in the secondary, their best defensive player is Brock Marion, the strong safety, Bakersfield, California. He's number seven. 
first pass of the night. Short one right over the middle. Gets it complete to his tight end. It's Brad Long. And Long will take it out to the 39-yard line. It's a gain of 13. Ron, you're looking at Eric White, number seven. Bill Jones, a trainer I've known for a long time, said that Gary Blackney completely turned this young man around when he was named a head coach. He told him, he said, you're not playing up to the level that you can play to. And he just built his confidence. And Eric White, you see the first pass, is a very confident quarterback. High formation again, and they go with the run. Five, 10, counted off at 11 yards, Zeb Jackson. Six feet, 190, a junior out of Toledo. And Mike, just what you talked about that Nevada was gonna have to be careful of, Bowling Green has done on two of their three plays, and that's just go straight at him. Well, that's not a good sign for Chris Ald and his defense. Now look for Nevada to maybe go to a little bit more 11 up where they'll bring every one of their players up tight to try to challenge Bowling Green a little bit to try to help them on stopping the run. This time with the single back again. 10 yards in the play, counted on the 14, Zeb Jackson. Wow, the middle of that offensive line, Foley, Bowers, and Hamoud, as Clayton Lopez has to come up and make the tackle. Well, what happens, Ron, when you run a too tight end offense, you balance the defense up. You see the double team on the nose guard, number 21, Zeb Jackson, just runs to the open area. Steve Bryant, the fine linebacker, number 92, finally makes the play. But by two tight ends in the offense, that makes them balance up on defense, and they'll run away from the nose guard. Zeb Jackson, three carries, 30 yards for him now. White sets in the pocket, dumps it over the middle. All alone this time is Leroy Smith inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. 21 yards, and Bowling Green so far is bowling right on down the field. Well, Ron, Leroy Smith's an interesting story, the fullback, because he was an all-league second-team conference tailback. He's Two years ago, Gary Blackney asked him to move to fullback because he wanted to use the fullback more as a pass receiver. And you see Eric White just throwing the football over the middle and a little delay to Leroy Smith for big yardage. Great hands, second on the team in receptions. Two of two for White. He's now 32 yards. Inside handoff, and again, it's the fullback. And that's Leroy Smith, the man that Mike was just talking about. You know, Mike, it takes a very team-oriented guy to do something like that. And as a tailback, you're going to get a lot more carries. As a fullback, you got to block more. But they utilize his talents. You're right, Ron. And Gary Black, you see on the, on the sideline, has told Leroy Smith that we're going to use you a little bit more at that fullback position to run the football, catch the ball in the back, and then you're right. You have to be unselfish to move from the tailback to the fullback position. No score, but Bowling Green is driving with a second down and two. Smith straight ahead and defensively, Nevada is right there. The Wolfpack jams that one up as 95 Jim Jones, the junior out of Oakland, the left defensive tackle steps up into the hole. Jim Jones, number 95, 6'2", 265, just beats the block of the offensive guard, Norman Howard, Hamoud, and makes the tackle in the backfield on Leroy Smith. Another look, see, no one was able to block Jim Jones. Third down, the line to make is the five. Play action, White gets it away, has a man open at the one. Touchdown, Bowling Green, Leroy Smith. Now let's check the markers that are down at the 12-yard line. There are two. Look like a holding call. Nope, the Bowling Green signal, it's on Nevada. Touchdown, Leroy the Smith. David Neal is the referee tonight. Nice drive by Gary Blackney's offense. Good mix, Ron. Ran the ball successfully. Good short passing game. Good mix. Showing a trick play here. They line up to see if you're going to line up with their players. If you don't line up over with them, then they're going to run the trick play. If you do, they come back into the regular formation to kick the extra point. 
Brian Lieber to attempt the extra point at the 10. Knocks it home. So there's a timeout of the field with 11.27 left in this opening quarter. It is 7-0, Bowling Green. Where in the world can you find hot days, hotter nights, romance under the sun, romance under the moonlight, sports all day, sports all night, superstars enjoying the day, superstars filling up the night, and action day and night, day and night. Only in Las Vegas. As times changed, so did the Ford full-size pickup. But it was always one tough truck, and boy, could it haul a load. Today, it's still tough. But it's designed to ride better. It has more style, more comfort. And boy, can it haul a load. Times change, trucks change. But Ford Tough never does. The best ever. This is no night for weak batteries. Got enough energy to pull us through, Rudolph? That's why you should test all your batteries with the Copper Top Tester. A little present. Only from Duracell. Doing it yourself can save you a lot of money if you get it right the first time. Make sure you do. Ask Ace. Stock up on EverReady Energizer batteries with a $1.25 rebate, and the Fisker's three-piece scissor set is only $9.99. Ace Best Buy is another reason Ace is the place for you. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Las Vegas Bowl is brought to you by Las Vegas, the entertainment and event capital of the world. And in part by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Now look at the youngsters from Bowling Green looking over the edge of that thing. That's Hoover Dam this past Tuesday. And now here they are down in the, the depths of Hoover Dam one of the tours that uh, that the two teams took this week. A couple of our crew guys threatened to jump off there with some money they lost here in the casino. No. Yeah. Some of our guys are lighter because they uh, have not tripped it to uh, Las Vegas before. Better check their expense accounts when they come back into the office. Chris Singleton back in a single safety and you see his numbers almost 30 yards per return. Shore eyes will kick it off. Number 38 for Bowling Green. it up anyway 25 30 breaks it open at the 35 and he's all the way out to the 41 yard line 23 yards on the return Eric White the quarterback on the touchdown with a good fake now good pressure by Nevada but look at Eric White he's so strong six foot six able to get the ball to Leroy Smith the fullback and then he powers his way in for the score Leroy Smith, and you see the drive. Eight plays, 80 yards, 333. Five runs and three passes. Diedrich Holmes is the lone setback behind Gatlin. Play action, pressure from the backside. He's going to go on top on first down, and he's got goal incomplete. Reeves had it, and then he dropped it at the 15-yard line. So Nevada tried to come right back with an answer. So here are the starters for Nevada. It is Gatlin who will go at quarterback. Vargas is the come from behind guy. We will see him at quarterback before the evening is over. 63 career touchdowns though for Gatlin. The wide receiver they like to go to, you saw it on the very first play. That is Brian Reeves, 81 catches this year. And up front of the offensive line, he's as tough to get around as his name is to pronounce. Portanish is the left tackle. His first name is Shar. 6'7", 285 pounds. Drop this time, and here is what he does best. Gatlin wide open at the 40, at the 35, and is finally tackled down at the 31 yard line. Joe Bear finally stopping. Well, Ron, what happens is you play man coverage, and they did a nice job on the wide receivers, but the X factor when you play man coverage is a scrambling quarterback. Fred Gatlin drops back to pass. Now all his receivers are being manned up. 
Now you see, once he starts up the field, all the receivers are man covered. You see Bowling Green running with the receivers. Everybody's in man coverage. There's nobody on the quarterback. Joe Bear finally makes the tackle. So now you see what we mean, or what we meant from the opening about Gatlin and his ability to scramble. Well, he's a load. Holmes, the lone setback. You can see Reeves looking back in toward the middle of the field. And they go with the running play, and Dietrich will be hit in the backfield, and Holmes is knocked down for no gain. Bob Dudley, number 70, is the guy to get there with the hit. And now here are the starters on defense for uh, Bowling Green tonight. On the down three, Redding House has done a great job of coming back from a knee injury, and the, the coaches have been extremely pleased with the job that he's done. The linebackers, very, very good ones. Here is a guy who has 19 sacks on the year, Kevin O'Brien. We'll call 48's number a lot tonight. And in the secondary, they all got their hands full with this group of receivers. Carlos Brooks probably is the best individual cover guy they have in the secondary. He's number 10. Blitz right up the middle. Pressure comes. He gets it away. And there's no flag, but the, the pass, I believe, hit an offensive lineman. It was O'Brien and Byer who were coming on the blitz. Well, Ron, the pressure came from Joe Bear up the middle of the free safety number four. Can't give Fred Gatlin a lot of time. See number four, the free safety with the blitz. Then from the outside, Kevin O'Brien, number 48. He was very fortunate to get rid of that football without getting sacked. He also was very fortunate not to have the flag thrown because, like I said, I think the only person who was in the area was an offensive lineman. They had three of the four top tacklers. 40% of the team's total for Bowling Green. Blitz comes again on third down, and, and they throw the middle screen. It's Reeves. He will have the first down and will be slammed down at the 18-yard line. 13 yards in the play. Ron, we've, we've got a great matchup on this side of the ball. Number three, Brian Reeves, the great receiver who just makes this catch against Kenny Burris. Number three for Bowling Green. He ran the middle screen and picked off Kenny Burris, number three, to open up Brian Reeves for a good game in the first down. And of course, Burris is a man that if they can get him in traffic or somebody in front of him, they want it. He's the fastest man on the team at 4-3. He has run the 40. And tonight, both teams play on a surface they're not accustomed to playing on, a faster surface. Straight drop. Pressure was on. He's going to be set. Gatlin stopped back at the 22. Artie Mangum, who has 154 tackles on the year. The first man to get there to him, number five. They're going to have pressure all night from Kevin O'Brien, number 48. And then Hutchison on the other side, number 11, because they're going to be wide, aligned real wide, and they're going to put a lot of pressure on those offensive tackles of Nevada. If you just joined us, 7-0. The Falcons of Bowling Green jumped on top of an 80-yard drive, but Nevada trying to answer back as they scrimmage from the Bowling Green 22. Gatlin, short drop, whips it out, has it complete, and the ball is fumbled. Out of bounds at the 11 yard line. That is Michael Stevens. And let's go down to the field in Charlene Hawk. Charlene. Ron and Mike. Mike, as you mentioned just a minute ago about the kind of pressure that Kevin O'Brien plans on putting on the quarterback all, all game long, he told me yesterday he planned on rushing the quarterback at least 60 times today, uh, which is double what he's done uh, in past games. He said they've been working extra hard on conditioning the last three weeks just so he can stay in the game the whole time. He doesn't want to come out at all. Guys? Uh, he looks like one of those linebackers who just said, let me go 100 times. I want a little blood on my chin and on my elbows. Third down. They need the nine. Quick pass is caught, and a great open field tackle will prevent the first down from being made. It is the man we talked about, Carlos Brooks, who was out there to hit Stevens and deny him the first down. It's a good tackle by Carlos Brooks. He's the short side corner where they put him into the boundary, which means he's a very physical player. He was a wide receiver last year. Use him in man coverage. Look at the tackle there by Carlos Brooks. Well, Mike, we have a field goal attempt coming up. This is a Terrellac, number 15, who will attempt it. And the ball will be placed down at the 20-yard line. Long enough, and he's good. So let's take a break. 8.22 left in the opening quarter. Two possessions, two scores. We'll be back to Las Vegas. 
holiday greetings from Budweiser. The people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. Laughlin, by the river, on the Colorado, 24-hour action, non-stop fun, over 8,000 value-priced guest rooms. Is it a time you got away? For more information, call 1-800-4-LAUGHLIN. Make a play for the river. And the winner is Ford Probe GT. We recently accepted the Motor Trend Car of the Year Award. But the real trophy is yours to take home. Ford Probe GT. A lean carved shape. A button-down cockpit, pure 24-valve performance, and now the Motor Trend Car of the Year. Now you're looking at number one, Fred Gatlin on the sideline, a senior from Compton, California. You see right there in front of me, Mike Senior, number 88. There's Reeves, this other wide receiver. And what they're talking about is what the secondary is doing to them, what they're giving them, and what they're trying to deny them. Well, the secondary Bowling Green is not going to allow them to free release. Mike, his own man. Doing his doing his all kids, man. Yeah. See, yeah. see, see, we missed you. Pick. Deep. Yeah. 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 Hey, Chris, work up. up. You got to get him. Hey. Work up. There ain't no excuses. Oh. You pick him, we got to touch him. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now, let's go to this. See, Ron, they're talking about picking the man coverage. Bowling Green with a lot of man coverage, a lot of pressure. So they're going to try to pick like in basketball, trying to rub off on different guys and get, get your receivers free on the outside or inside. George Johnson is the deep man as you look at Steve Lester again. As I said, we went to break. Two possessions, two scores. Seven to three, Bowling Green leads. Boy, look at the wind with this one. He's got a great leg, but that 20 mile an hour wind really put a vitamin shot into that when it goes out the back of the end zone. Now, Eric White, Offensive Player of the Year, second year in a row, and also the most valuable player, second year in a row in the, the MAC Conference. And his numbers so far tonight 46 yards, he is three of three really fun yesterday we'll elaborate on as the game goes on but sitting uh, at the luncheon with Eric White and, uh, and wide receiver Chris Singleton the two player representatives for the schools at, uh, the day before lunch they set a screen to the near side as Zed Jackson at the 30 and he'll take it for the first down to the 31 11 yards in the play Ron, this offense is designed by Mike Faragelli. He's the offensive coordinator. His dad, Joe, was a Canadian League coach. And so you're going to see a lot of Canadian League principles in this offense. Just a quick screen out here to Zeb Jackson, number 21. Pretty good blocking by the offensive line. Urban Cutright, number 14, is going to make the tackle. the fullback. Now that, Mike, is what you can explain to the why they want Smith to come from tailback to fullback because they slide him out there on the short side of the field hoping that somebody will forget him. Just a, a great hands and a great runner. He can run the football at the short uh, being 24 and a half yards off the uh, ball and then he also can slide out into the flat and over the curl areas and work against linebackers and he has very good hands as a receiver. play this time as the pitch goes back to Jackson and he's going to turn disaster into a first down out to the 47 Marion and cut right defensively when you see college football when you see the eight man front the Chicago Bear defense that Mike Ditkin his coaches made famous one of the checkoffs right away is to the speed option here Eric Wright makes a good decision does not pitch right away then gets the ball out to Zeb Jackson who picks up the first down Four now for 40 yards for him. 
Mark Slaycheck, 84, the fine wide receiver, just getting in the way, good block. Nothing to do it on this one. Zeb Jackson gets hit in the backfield, and that's Tanksley, a junior out of Napa, California, who steps up and makes the big hit on him. Ron, you talk, we were talking about the offensive coordinator, Mike Fergelli, being from Canada in the Canadian League. Gary Blackney said the good news is we play with four downs instead of three, but the bad news is we only have 11 players, so you got to take one player out of all these plays. <laughs> good look at Tom Tanksley, who just made the, uh, the defensive stop for the Wolfpack of Nevada. Seven to three, Bowling Green leads. We have just gone beyond the midway point of the opening period. White throws it back, almost intercepted. As Duncan had it hit him right in the chest, the ball was just behind the intended receiver, Hankins. And I think it surprised Duckett as much as anyone. It also surprised David Hankins because I don't think he ever saw the football. Corey Duckett had a chance for the interception, the six foot four corner. It just seemed like they both lost the football. Here's Eric White. Drop back five steps. There's a throw, but look at David Hankins. He, he really never saw the football. one and third down conversions this time they need it down to the 44 shotgun formation and white over the middle and has it complete to red inside the 30 to the 27 cut right makes the stop well we're talking instant offense here tonight now i'll tell you and uh, ronnie red number one when you play a lot of man coverage and both these teams are going to try to play man coverage eric white does a nice job of buying time for ronnie red you see the man coverage he's able to get away from cut right make the reception and pick up the first down mike nevada has just inserted big number 73 joe caspers into the lineup he is 6 7 280 and the coaches say he does an excellent job here he's lined up on the outside of the right does a good job of batting down passes at the line of scrimmage. Straight ahead with the run. They try to cross him up. Breaks off a tackle to Jackson, but he's stopped at the 25. And it'll be a second down and eight. Lead it defensively. When you have a layoff like both these teams have had, two, three-week layoff, getting ready for a ball game, you'd expect that your defenses would be a little bit late coming around as you, when you work against your scout team in practice, you don't see the speed factor that you're going to see in this bowl game. So it'll take both defenses a little while to get used to the speed. Mike, I think they also both feel like they're they're just flying because of playing on the artificial surf. They are accustomed to playing on grass. Go look. Straight ahead with Smith. Leroy. Boy, that's a pretty good collision at the 20-yard line. It's going to be a third down and three, and it's Brock Marion we talked about out of Bakersfield, California. Also, Martin Washington helping out on the stop. I think both these teams came in with a slogan tonight. For Nevada, it's to gain respect. We're in Division I bowl game. For Bowling Green, it was to stay focused. You're in Las Vegas, Nevada. Gary Blackney told his team, hey, let's get ready for this football game. And once we win, then you can celebrate and enjoy Las, Las Vegas. Well, they're two of two on third down conversions. They need to take it to the 17 to be three of three. Contact at the line of scrimmage, and I believe they're going to be three of three. You can see right in the middle, it looked like Jim Jones trying to get that quick move and get the jump on Cal Bowers, the center. If he was drawn offside or if there was contact. That ball, offside, defense. Yep, that's going to be it. Eric White with his cadence. Jim Jones with just a little jump there. You always tell your defensive lineman, Ron, you watch the football. You don't move till the football moves. You don't go on sound. The embarrassing thing for him is he's closer to it than anybody else other than Bowers, the center. Chris Hall, honoring some encouragement as his team looks at another first down. Zip Jackson will take it inside the 12 to around the 11. This time, Jim Jones is there to make the stop defensively. 7-3, to three, the Falcons on top. The Falcons of Bowling Green leading over Nevada. 43 yards so far for him.
Good look at Eric White. 6-6, Massillon, Ohio. A city that puts out a lot of good college football players. This time they roll the pocket. You see the backside pressure. Looks in the end zone. Incomplete. Waited as long as he could for Hankins to come clear, but Hankins was being double covered in the base of the end zone. David Hankins, he, he did come clear, but Eric White just couldn't get enough on the football. As Eric White rolls to the right, he's looking for Slaycheck. He's not open. Now you'll see Hankins come into the picture and see if he just keeps coming around. Eric White with a little bit more on the ball would have had a touchdown. Yeah. Now, when you look at Mark Slaycheck down here, he's six foot four. So now you use your six foot four frame down here in the end zone. So let's keep our eye on Mark Slaycheck. Third down, and they need the five. to the open side of the field. Delivered. Slaycheck has it inside the five. And from where they parked it, I believe he has picked up the first down. Brock Marion was just on him as close as he could be, but looks like he's going to have the first down at the four. Well, Gary Blackney's seen a lot of great receivers in his coaching days. He said he, this young man, Mark Slaycheck, is the best he's ever seen. Just an inside route, but you remember now he's six foot four, so that's why he becomes so dangerous down here in the red zone. Came into this ball game tonight with 82 receptions. Straight ahead with Leroy Smith, and he'll be stopped at around the three. Could have got that play in a phone booth. I mean, everybody was in. Was in close on this play. It was power football at its best. Good defensive surge by Nevada. Look at this play. Count them all. Playing in your living room. Leroy Smith, there's just no place to go. Still picks up a couple tough yards. Good defense by Nevada. Second down and the ball resting just outside the four. Bowling Green. Leading by four. Touchdown, Zip Jackson. Went to a slot formation, removed two receivers. As Barry Blackney has to again be very happy with his offense. They moved two receivers out, eliminated two players defensively, and just blew up Jackson right at the defensive line. Seven carries for 74 yards, or 47, I beg your pardon. Seven carries, 47 yards, and he scores the touchdown as Lever to attempt his second extra point of the night. He's got it. So let's take a break and let's look at it as he comes straight at you into the end zone. Deb Jackson, the junior out of Toledo. Well, actually from behind, and you'll see the touchdown. 14 to 3, Bowling Green. to wall basketball Saturday. Don't miss six great games starting Saturday afternoon at 12.30 Eastern live. ESPN. Pick up the phone for the latest sports news from ESPN anytime, day or night.
Well, offensively, the Falcons of Bowling Green uh, have got something to kind of be smiling about. They have put a quick 14 points on the board. We have only 2.28 left to play in this opening quarter. 14 to 3, and here's a look at it. Straight up the middle, Jackson gets the touchdown. Ron, that was Scott Seeliger, the offensive line coach, very pleased with the way his offensive line is playing and the adjustments they've made here in the first quarter. Zeb Jackson with a four-yard run for the Bowling Green second touchdown. So they've gone 80 yards twice, Mike. The first drive took eight plays. This time it took 13 plays. Like if you make a long run, Gary Blackney was, was quoted this morning as saying that the most important thing to come out of this ball game tonight would be time of possession. So far, his game plan has to be working to a tee. He's got good mix in his offense, but he's able to run the football. When you run the football, it just sets so many things up. Shore eyes with the kick, and it comes down to Singleton. He tries to get outside, and good coverage from the special team. Well, they wrapped him up at the 25, and the first man there was Steve Rodriguez. When you have the quarter where you have where you're kicking into the wind, you saw the low kick. And a good return that they, they end up only on the 24 yard line. So a good job by the special teams of Bowling Green. Well, the first time that Nevada had the football in this game, they moved it right down the field. Then the, the drive stall, they kicked a 29 yard field goal. And it was Gatlin who was the guy who was really tough to handle. He had the longest run of the drive, that of 31 yards. He's three of five passing for 21. West is coming at setback, and they pitch to him, and he's got running room at the 30, and now the 33. Mike, he is normally a wide receiver, but one of the coaches hinted at practice yesterday that we might see him a lot tonight. Well, Carnell West, a good run, but you know we're going to see number three defensively, Kenny Burris against Brian Reeves. Now watch him back up. This is an automatic where they're automatic in the option play against that defense and a good block by Brian Reeves, number three, for Carnell West to pick up some yardage. As the coaches describe Cornell West, they say he has a little more shake and bake than uh, some other guys they put back there. Gonna give it to him again. Nice move at the line of scrimmage and because of that extra step. I think he's going to have the first down. He will just across the 35. Artie Mangum is there defensively. The story on the offensive line for Nevada as we have 131 left to play in this opening quarter is that Portanese was the only returning starter and in the early part of the season coach Alt was very concerned over a, a lack of consistency by the offensive line. But he said after about four games that they really started to gel and come together. He's very pleased with the way they finished the season. Pressure from the outside. Corner blitz. That's Burris. Boy, Bowling Green is pulling out the stops here. What happened, Ron, is this play should have been picked up because Carnell West, number 11, was the player designed. You're going to see number three come on a blitz, but watch Carnell West, number 11. See him miss him. He got too wide, and Kenny Burst was able to sack Fred Gatlin. So there's the danger, we also could mention, in using the guy who normally plays at wide receiver to bring him back into the backfield to have to block. And with that, Dedrick Holmes comes back into the lineup. Throws the pass, has it complete, that's Reeves. Check it, Daryl King, I beg your pardon, number nine. Out at the 43-yard line. Gain of 17, and they need to move it just across the 45 to, uh, to move the sticks. He had more yardage if he would not have went down on his knees. Wanted to make sure that he made the short catch, didn't he? Trying to cradle the football, and he went down on his knee. Uh, otherwise, he'd have picked up the first down. This could be the final play of this opening quarter as you look at King. He's a senior out of Concord, California. They run back into the boundary. Gatlin runs into his own man, and then he is slung down by Bob Dudley. Big number 70, the junior from Northville, Michigan, grabbed him by the jersey and slung him down. And with that, the end of the first quarter.
so let's take a break. At the end of the first 15 minutes, it is Bowling Green 14 and the Pack of Nevada 3. Where in the world can you find a castle? Tigers, the black hole, glamour, romance, neon, a volcano, more neon, feathers, a cabaret, a tropical island, more romance, and superstar after superstar after superstar, only in Las Vegas. This is definitely one night. You should test all your batteries with the Copper Top Tester. It quickly tells you if a battery should be replaced or go on its merry way. The Copper Top Tester. A little present. Only from Duracell. It's hot. It's spicy. It sizzles. It's the new hot-looking, hot-blooded Ford Ranger. The 1993 Ford Ranger. It's the hottest thing to hit America since the Chili Pepper. Oh, Ford truck, the best ever oh. Get your blood pumping. Hers, too. Unless, of course, you stink. You don't have to if you use an old device. Because the pump's concentrated, and it puts more power on your bit than the leading aerosol deodorant. So it works. Big time. The proof? There's your strength. She's all I need. The pump from Old Spice. Don't let the size fool you. Give it a shot. For great odor protection, demand proof, not promises. Now wait a minute. Polaroid introduces new party film. Nothing picks up a party like new Polaroid party film with colorful new borders. So grab some new party film and Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada in the Las Vegas Bowl, 14-3. Bowling Green, and it's the first punt tonight. Slachek is back at the 25 in Bowling Green with a 10-man rush at the line of scrimmage. Lester waits for the snap, and they've got the return now. This is a good kick into the wind. Fair catch is called for and is made at the 29, and now here comes a marker in. Lester's not happy, but Mike into this game and win. It wasn't a bad... Was a bad punt at all. No, good coverage kick. Good coverage kick. Forced a fair catch. Holding against Bowling Green. By the way, we might mention, I said that David Neal is the referee tonight. This is a split crew from the Big West and the MAC. As you look at Gary Blackney. And the back on the receiving team, it'll be a first down. Penalty will push it back inside the 20. Uh, they'll put it down at the 19. 14 to 3. The Falcons leading over the Wolfpack in the early going here. Ron, the key is Charlene said in the open is Xavier Carey, number 46. The free safety is not playing tonight for Nevada. That forces them to change some things they'd ordinarily do on defense. Because when your veteran center fielder is gone, you just don't make the kind of adjustments you can make with him out there. Derek White continues to go at quarterback. He's 7 of 9, 100 yards, and a touchdown. Wants to put it up again. Near sideline, almost caught at the 30, and McElroy couldn't hold on. So if you've just walked in to your house and turned on the television, this is what has happened so far. The storyline, Gatlin, 51 yards total offense. 29-yard field goal by Terlak. Bowling Green, Two 80-yard touchdown drive. One eight plays, the other 13. Jackson, 47 yards rushing, and he has a touchdown. And as we mentioned, Eric White already 100 yards in passing and a touchdown for him. Over the middle. Has it complete. That's a great. 
screen pass and catch at the 28 yard line. As Slaychik holds on, he really got belted across the middle, was able to hold on. Well, that was Clayton Lopez, the substitute for Xavier Carey, who makes the tackle. But Mark Slaychik again shows you the type of receiver he is. He'll make the tough catch over the middle. And Eric White told us the other day that he likes to throw the football over the middle. A lot of quarterbacks like to throw it on the outside, the out routes, the comeback routes, the streaks. He said, I like the inside routes. Brian Narker comes in at tight end. He's returning from a leg injury that took him out earlier this year from 94. Smith breaks it out almost to the 35 yard line and that is another third down conversions uh, we got to check they're they're perfect on third down conversions four a four on the end. and let's go down to Charlene Hawks Ron after the last series defensive coordinator for Nevada Ken Mizell was talking to his unit and he told them that on third and long they have them in a hole but they're getting out and then he said the Bowling Green is throwing to the weak side, throwing everything to the weak side, and his defensive unit is hesitating, watching for the fakes, and they're not attacking. They need to do a better job of reading the football, okay? Okay, thanks, Charlene. When you got a team that's perfect on third down conversions, something in the offensive plan is sneaking by what you're trying to do to him defensively, goes without well, saying. Well, you're looking at Ken Mazzell, the defensive coordinator. He told me yesterday, he said, hey, this is a Midwest-type team. They're big and strong, and we cannot let them cram the football at us running the football and they're having success running the football. And Mike, look what they have right here. This is disaster for a defense. Second down and short. So they really got a down to play with, so to speak. And they're not making mistakes. They're not fumbling the ball. They're not jumping off sides. They're not making any mistakes. You see him pull the guards, the counter tray, runs into his own man, and now here's Jackson all the way out to the 50-yard line. And the offensive front for Bowling Green, Wise, Foley, Bowers, Hamoud and also Peters just doing an excellent job. It was Bryant who made the defensive play. The offensive line that you're talking about, Ron, it's a down block and the pulling guards, 68 Matt Foley, Joe Wise, 61, and then Zeb Jackson just steps up inside and picks up the first down. Boy, those guys are so big. The running backs just kind of hide behind them and then break it open. Pants has it complete. That's Carr. Darius Card, freshman out of Cleveland, will take it for a five, maybe a six-yard gain. Forey Duckett is there defensively. It, it's coming so easy offensively. You, you'd expect them, if you're coaching this football team, Bowling Green, Gary Black, he's got to be thinking, this is coming so easy that I hope these guys don't start getting overconfident, but they're just really uh, executing the football as well as you can play offensive football. Number 40, Darius Card, the backup fullback with that reception. And they like him. He's really a hard-nosed kid, they say. Two tight end alignment. And just goes straight for the run. Jackson will have the first down. And Mike, let me ask you, Go ahead. You, were gonna... you, you had a key point a little while ago, and, I, and I, we'll get a statistic on this before long, that the key, Ron, is first down. Yeah. They're knocking off five, six yards, as you see Chris Walt, Chris Alt, the head coach in Nevada, and he's got to be concerned about his defense right now wearing down, number one, but two, they have not made any type of big stops in this game yet. Mike, did you see the defensive alignment that time? with the two tight ends and the linebackers were still three to four yards off the ball. Well, well the problem is, is they're balancing them up the nose guard. They're just running away from where the nose guard lines. This time they come with pressure. He puts it up and incomplete. And Slechik may have gotten away with a push. He turned around to Brock Marion and patted him on the back after the play was over, but he was trying to... Uh, maneuver to get to the football. Well, Chris Alt told me Brock Marion, number seven, is one of his best football players, an all-around football player. He's in man coverage here against Slaycheck, and just a good job of not allowing Mark Slaycheck to get to the football. Not pass interference, just no. good defense yes. by Brock Marion. Yep, very good. All-conference three years in a row for Nevada. Look at that gaining on first down, that, That's the key now. Now they held it. Now second and long. Look for a shovel draw here. Shotgun formation, that's exactly what they run. Zeb Jackson. And nicely defended by Nevada. That's uh, Tanksley and Condra. Jeff Condra, number 99. Sophomore out of Pinole, California. They got a bunch of kids from Pinole. Who's where, that's where Gino Toretta's from. I, I, I want to 
congratulate you too on the great job you did at the banquet the other day. You talked about Pinole, California, and you talked about Gino Toretta, and you knew about Maslin, Ohio, and I'll tell you what, your wealth of knowledge, as I say every week, it just never surprises me. The only thing I can see that you're a little limited on is how to play blackjack. <laughs> Third down, and they need the 28. That deserves no comment. Over the middle, he's got it. And they're going to have still another first down, this time at the 26-yard line. Slaycheck is there, and Mike, their third down calls have just been perfect. Gary Blackney, again, you talk about what he said something to me the other day. He said, Mark Slaycheck snatches the football. He doesn't catch it, and that's exactly what he did there. He was able to go back across the body and snatch the football out of the air. Great hands by number 84, Mark Slaycheck. Smith and Jackson come back in as the as the two backs about to go under 10 minutes left until halftime. Bowling Green 14 to 3. This time they run to the short side. Wow, pretty good collision as Leroy Smith got the ball and he also got Todd Norman at the same time. Todd Norman step was stepping up and really made the hit on Leroy Smith. But you see how effective Leroy Smith is. The numerous things he does for this ball club. He blocks. He runs the ball up inside catches the football out of the backfield and remember he was a second team all conference tailback that unselfishly moved to the fullback spot and Gary Blackney has rewarded him by using him and, and really designed the offense to get the football to him. I think this is the 12th play of this drive. Their last drive was 13 plus. Rolls the pocket, delivers it on time and has it complete at the 16 yard line. You see the crowd right there trying to help officiate. That was Martin who also is from Maslin, Ohio. He's a sophomore. Maslin, Ohio. There's a there's a gentleman in Maslin, Ohio that's a legend in high school coaching. Carl Ducky Schroeder is probably watching this football game tonight. But he coached with all the coaches at Maslin. And he's resided there for a long time and so active in that community and program. And uh, I bet he's really proud of these Maslin players on the Bowling Green team. First down, Bowling Green. Ron, I'll bet you you can remember one of the guys who's coaching Division I football right now that coached in Bowling Green a long time ago. Become a very good friend at West Virginia. I know you're talking about Don Nealon. And uh, I know he's probably watching tonight, Gary Blackney, and, and Don Nealon was played quarterback at Bowling Green under Doyle Perry, who was 77, 11, and 5. And can you win many more games than Doyle Perry won at Bowling Green? What a great job he did. Play. Leroy Smith is going to be banged hard at the line of scrimmage. He'll give him forward progress to the 14, but a good job by the defense that time. Norman and Condra come up to uh, stop the play. Now there, they stop him on first down. Now, a little different situation as far as uh, Coach Blackney and his staff is concerned, rather than having the second and short. And you're looking at number seven who's pulling all the right slot machines tonight here in this football game. Eric White, he hasn't made a mistake tonight. Been perfect. Puts it up in the end zone and almost intercepted. Brock Marion. In fact, Slaychick did a good job of playing defensive back as Marion just had him covered as well as you can. That's a good job. Trying again to use that 6-4 frame of number 84, Mark Slaychick, against the six foot one Brock Marion. One-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Eric White knows that he's got his best receiver one-on-one, -on -one, and if he can get the ball out there, he just underthrew it to Mark Slaycheck. Ball underthrown. He, I, he could have got the ball a little bit more to the left on the outside. I believe he did. He's showing Mark. He would have knocked it down. Otherwise, Marion would have changed possession. Third down. Oh, they are six up six. Delivers it, has it complete inside the 10 yard line to Hankins, and that's not going to be enough for the first down. So the magic streak finally ends for Bowling Green, and they're confronted with a fourth down. Let's see from where they put it. Mike, they're still going to need a couple of yards. Well, I'm really impressed with Derek White, how he buys time to get his receivers open. 
I think they're going to go for it. Gary Blackney's thinking he's going to need a lot of points with this offense. And Nevada knows of their comeback. He may try to draw them off sides. May take a timeout here to talk it over. Shelter's come in with a two tiny, and now you're right. Eric Wright has just turned around to the referee and said, We'd like to talk it over as the entire unit runs to their side of the field, so we'll take a break with them. 7.59 left until halftime. We'll be back to Las Vegas after this. If you've discovered that all you really need in life is just a little more. Discover a new level of performance and handling. Toyota introduces the all-new, totally redesigned Toyota Corolla. Discover Corolla again. Where in the world can you find hot days, hotter nights, romance under the sun, romance under the moonlight, sports all day, sports all night, superstars enjoying the day, superstars filling up the night, and action day and night, day and night. Only in Las Vegas. Welcome back to Las Vegas, 14 to 3, Bowling Green. You saw the numbers on them for the season on fourth down attempts, 4 of 14. Gary Blackney has decided they're going to go for it. Your point is well taken. Nevada has been able to really pile up the points in big groups all season long when they needed to. Maybe he thinks he needs that many. I keep my eye on Leroy Smith here, number 19. It's Slaycheck 84. Smith in motion. There's the pitch. He's going to throw back to his quarterback, and all alone is right. Touchdown. Caught him in man coverage, Ron, and when you're in man coverage in a short yardage goal line situation, guess what? There's nobody on the quarterback. That's just the way the design is. Good call by Gary Blackney. Knew he had him in man coverage. Here's the pitch by Eric White. Watch Eric White. Good faking job. Now Leroy Smith just needs to get the ball off. There's nobody around. Eric White, touchdown. Brian Lieber will attempt the extra point, trying to put Bowling Green up, 21 to three. And he does. So we'll take a break. So far, the Falcons have been devastating. I can't. No, I'm sorry. I don't think so. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, no, 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 please, no, baby, no. Oh, uh, not a good idea. Not, not now. No, no, bad time. Fight morning breath with Scope. Scope has two powerful ingredients that kill 90% of the bacteria that cause morning breath. Your kiss is ready. Pucker her up. Right on the kisser. Come on. Kiss morning breath goodbye with scope. Give me that kiss. We're going country tonight. What do you say? Have you had enough of rap and rock and roll today? It's country tonight at the Aladdin Hotel and Casino with the best in country music, old and new. All played live by a great 10-piece band, eight feature performers, and a powerhouse cast of singers and dancers. So get a move on. We're all going country tonight. We're going country tonight. What do you say? We're all going country to The Remington microscreen shaves as close as a blade or your money back. Two flexible screens let you shave whiskers below skin level. It's quick, smooth, comfortable. A great value. The Remington microscreen. 
We all count on our batteries to get us through, but you never know when they're going to hit the skids. Only Duracell has the Copper Top Battery Tester, so you can be sure your batteries will keep you gliding along. You can't top the Copper Top. ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Las Vegas Bowl is brought to you by Las Vegas Events, presenter of world-class sporting events year-round. And in part by Budweiser, the king of beers with that fresh, pure, natural taste. Nothing beats a bud. some of the Wolfpack fans, and how long will it be before we see this young man? Chris Vargas, junior out of Woodland, California. Mike, he's been the, the magician, the bring him from behind guy. You know, I know that probably Chris Alt doesn't want to go to the bullpen as quickly, but, boy, they're down big, 21-3 here. I, I don't think you'll see Chris Vargas to the second half. When you talk, his nickname's Magic. If you're in Nevada, you're not talking about Irvin Johnson. You're talking about Chris Vargas because we'll talk about some of the comebacks that he's brought this team back from for Chris Alt in the last two years. Probably the biggest comeback victory in NCAA history. Sure is to kick it off, and this time he has the win with him. This is Singleton, fumbles it at the goal line, he'll return it. Oh, my goodness, he gets turned to flip at the six-yard line. And Chris Singleton is shaken up and down there. George Johnson, who also is a return man for uh, Bowling Green, plays both ways in the special teams. And Singleton is shaken up. Chris Singleton, a, a junior from Hercules, uh, California. He was the player rep for Nevada yesterday. Each team, as I mentioned, had a team at the head table. And here's the hit right there by Johnson. Boy, he comes down hard on that left shoulder. And, and it looks as though, yeah, he's up and, and uh, okay. What a bright young man. And Mike, he delighted the crowd. In fact, he got the biggest roar of the day. When, And he's a public relations and broadcasting major, but he was patting the people of Las Vegas on the back. He said, I know we're your arch rivals, but you have been so nice to us, and we appreciate all your courtesies. And he said to Bowling Green, you got some very big guys. But just remember, we've got one thing you don't. Our coach is taller. <laughs> and I guess Chris is about, what, a half inch taller than uh, than uh, than Gary Blackie. But anyway, got a got a huge reaction from the crowd. Glad to see that Chris is OK and, and headed to the sideline on his own. goes to Holmes. He took that one yard deep in the end zone, and what an outstanding open field play by Artie Mangum. Took his ankle out with one hand. That was the checkoff again, Ron, to that defensive look that Bowling Green is showing, the Chicago Bear look. 154 tackles during the season for Artie Mangum, number five. He's the middle linebacker, beats the block in the offensive tackle, makes Dedrick Holmes 26. Try to get to the corner and does not allow him to corner. We saw Bryant force the pitch. And Mangum just took that right arm and knocked his feet out from under him. Over the middle, has it complete to Reeves. Takes it out to the 28-yard line. First time we've heard from him in the last couple of series, and he's the guy that they've got to get the football to. Ron, he's a big-time receiver. His visits when he come out of high school were to Alabama, Nebraska, Syracuse, Arizona State, New Mexico. He went to Arizona State and transferred to Nevada. His 81 receptions this year, second in the nation for 1,114 yards and 10 touchdowns. And look here. Here, 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 here may be the trick play now. Chris Vargas into the ball game. Do you see Gatlin? Is that him lined up on the outside? No. Uh, he went on the sideline, and there you see the pass. He's short of its mark because he was trying to get Michael Stevens. 
what Mike is talking about is what they have is a play that where Marcus will come in and you look at Gatlin right there when they got them both on the field you better hang on because one is going to throw to the other. What's well, interesting Chris Marcus told me yesterday when he doesn't start the game he's the Dennis Eckersley in college football he likes to come off the bench and try to get his team going here and uh, likes those when he comes in the ball game he's going to throw the football. Well, right now his club is down 21 to 3 and he needs to get something going. Short drop, put some touch on this one, and incomplete at the 50-yard line. Darrell King was the intended receiver, and that was Darnell Stanton who was with him all the way. Well, Darnell Stanton is the wide, he was a wide receiver last year, moved to a defensive back. He's a nickel back. He has a knack for man coverage and watching break on the ball. He's just behind on the play, but he got his right hand up just far enough to deflect the ball away from Darrell King, number nine. People are trying to yell for face masking. I don't think that's face masking on Darnell State. He was really watching his eyes, wasn't he? Cornell West comes into the backfield, number 11. Vargas on third down. Thompson now running for his life at the 30. And he gets taken down hard at the 32. Again, it is Stanton who comes up to make the stop. And he will be short of the first down. It's interesting that Chris Alt has decided on a Chris Vargas here in the first half because he didn't think he'd play until the second half. He said, I watch Fred Gatlin and I, I know when he's in his comfort zone. And if he's in his comfort zone, I'll stay with him. So he must feel like he needs to generate something with Chris Vargas right now. Well, you see Coach Alt talking with both quarterbacks as you look at the deep back. Number 84, Slachik. And again, Bowling Green will put 10 men at the line of scrimmage. Are they coming after Lester or not? I think they'll go after him this time. Last time they had the return on and it was a 29 yard kick. And they are they're coming after him. right at the middle it's blocked and is picked up at the 10 at the 5 and they're going to say it's down at the 20 yard line it's Burris number three no touchdown but it is first down at the 20 yard line for Bowling Green first and both blocked it and picked it up on the last punt they kind of sized up Nevada and fair caught and had a return on but when you're kicking into this win Ron you're not going to get a return so you might as well go block the kick Ken Burris number three just comes free from the outside he stretches out takes the football right off the foot of Steve Lester number 18 but you see he's kicking into a win so you know you're not going to get a return so you might as well go for the punt block and it pays off for Bowling Green now I look for him to go for a home run here on first down Darius Card comes into the backfield along with uh, Jackson and it's Jackson right up the middle tries to spin off the tackler Todd Norman and he'll make the stop let's clarify one thing for people that are saying well why couldn't he pick it up and run with it when he when he gained possession of the football he had a knee or knees down therefore no forward progress can be made he was if the down ball had bounced and he had come up and got it then he could have returned yeah he was down you're right Ron. He had possession good call by the official 21 to 3 the Falcon was a golden green lead we are now under five minutes until halftime Zeb Jackson gets to the outside, has a block from Slitchak at the five, and touchdown, Bowling Green. We well, got a great block from Norman Hamu, number 73. Boy, Bowling Green's offense is just so powerful tonight. Give to Zeb Jackson the key block by number 73, Norman Hamoud, and then speed to the outside. The good block by Slaycheck again on the outside. Number 84 used that 6 4 frame to block and, and spring Zeb Jackson for the touchdown. Zeb now 13 carries, 89 yards, and his second touchdown. As Lieber tries to put him up by 25 points. And he does. So we'll take a break. The Falcons 28 and Nevada 3.
to stay tuned to ESPN tonight for our extensive coverage of college basketball that will continue the Pepperdine Waves take on the Montana Grizzlies tonight at midnight Eastern time it is nine o'clock Pacific time Pepperdine and Montana Mike let me give you a couple of numbers that say a lot about this man's football team here are their drives eight plays 80 yards touchdown 13 plays 80 yards touchdown 16 plays 81 yards touchdown two plays following the block punt 21 yards and a touchdown they're just controlling the whole game but you have to remember this team nevada is used to coming from behind we'll, we'll chronicle some of those comebacks that they've had in the last few years have just been unbelievable and the comeback kid is number 10 chris vargas he needs to get hot for nevada you know, the other point to make, they may not get the ball one more time this half, but in those plays alone, they've already had it 39 times. Michael, at this rate right here, that would be 80 offensive plays. You'd like to have that as a coach, wouldn't you? Oh, geez, that's how you just control the game. And the other problem for Nevada is they're throwing into the wind a little bit, although I don't think it's that much of a wind that will affect them here in the second quarter. But Cornell West has gone back as a deep safety replacing Singleton. He was shaking up. Here comes Cornell. A little sideways at the 15. It's George Johnson again. George did a little bit of everything tonight on the special teams. Another great job that's happening for Gary Blackney's team is Paul Morrow, the defensive coordinator, holding the Nevada team to 78 yards total yards while Bowling Green has knocked off 257 yards. Well, oh, remember, one of their losses was to Ohio State. They had six turnovers in that ball game. Mike, they held the Buckeyes to 234 yards, and that game was at Columbus. Chris Alton told me that John Cooper told him he thought Bowling Green was one of the best 25 teams in the country. Top 25. Gatlin back in at quarterback, and they go with the draw. Two yards, maybe three. That's Cornell West, who will take it out to the 21-yard line. Well, Nevada's not going to win this game running the football, but you have to keep Bowling Green honest because you have to keep Kevin O'Brien 48 from just rearing back and rushing the passer like Charlene talked about. He said, I'm going to rush him 60 times tonight. I think she may be underestimating it a little bit. <laughs> O'Brien, a senior from Sterling Heights, Michigan, 6'4", 230 pounds. Short drop and a quick out pass, and that one was behind Reed. Gatlin really took a shot and that was a short drop that was not even a five step was it three step drop and, and you know sometimes when a quarterback you just want to hit him you want to knock him down uh, you want to make sure he knows that when he goes back to throw he's going to get hit there's the throw there's the hit didn't sack him but you're continuously punishing him throughout the football game body blows that was riding house the senior from uh, Stowe, Ohio. We talked about Jeff in the opening tonight. Dietrich Holmes comes back in at running back for Nevada. Third down, the line to make is the 28 yard line. Gatlin hit from behind, and guess who? Kevin O'Brien, and that's the third time that they've sacked him tonight. Well, Charlene talked about Kevin O'Brien and talked, and she talked to him yesterday. He talked about how he likes to rush the passer. But he does a nice job here going inside. Look, he starts outside, now inside. There's the switch, and now he comes off the switch block, never gives up, and makes the tackle on Fred Gatlin, number one. Gets off the block pretty quickly. Can't block him in the Mid-American, the coach has told me. Can't block him in any league, I believe. Third punt of the night. The first one, the 29 yards. The second one was blocked. I'd go after this one again. They're coming after him, and he barely got it away. Slaycheck will run away from it. He gets a good bounce here. Takes a Nevada bounce, and it will be touched dead at the 44-yard line. So Bowling Green has 3.02 to work with. That's a 38-yard kick under pressure and into the wind. 
Coming up at halftime, our Duracell halftime report, Jerry Tarkanian fired at San Antonio. Also, the bowl blitz and Drew Bledsoe, yeah. a profile on him. Well, Jerry Tarkanian should remember, if they can fire Paul Brown, which they did at Cleveland Browns, uh, I guess everybody gets fired, but I'm sad to see that because I think Jerry Tarkanian is an excellent coach, and uh, when you come to Nevada, this is his city. Yeah, that's, that's true. Johnson and Smith the setbacks this time. Play action. And the screen pass hit his offensive lineman. It was either Hamoud or Bowers in the back of the head. And the reason for it is Leroy had gotten around in front of the blockers instead of behind him. He tripped. He was drifting too far, Ron. You're right. I think they're going to hit. They may hit them with a penalty here. Well, you can't hit an offensive lineman. No. And, but I think what happened, the ball was behind the line of scrimmage, Joe. But Leroy Smith just got out of okay. where he needed to be on that screen. He drift, uh, just was drifting in front of his offensive lineman. And Leroy's coming off the sideline now, to talk see, about it. Now the flag's been thrown. Mike, and, and, and it, the question is, in, in your point, <laughs> if he was... If he was beyond the line of scrimmage, that's, uh, that's penalty. And that's what they've just thrown. He got into a conference and they talked it over. The umpire said, yes, he was. They had 2.54 on the clock for Bowling Green, and two timeouts left is an eternity with this offense. Yeah, that's the truth. Well, Eric White is just, he's pulling all the right uh, stops tonight. 13 to 20, 141 yards and a touchdown, but it's just made some critical plays at, uh, at times when Gary Blackman's <laughs> offense was uh, just trying to sustain first downs all the time. Nevada showing the pressure on the outside. Now they back off as you see the ships in the line and they go with the running play. And that's George Johnson who will be caught with a good open field stop at the 42 yard line. And it's Lamont Porter, number 49. He's a freshman from Sacramento. Rodden. Most of the passes you see Lamont Porter, number 49, the linebacker, reads the play, gets off the block. May have been a little holding there. Beats the hold and the block. Lamont Porter makes the tackle. But when you have the win like this and you have a third down and 13 yards, if you're going to air one out, you're going to air it out right now with Eric White letting him, throwing the ball deep. Bully Green, six of seven on third down conversions. Going to have to hurry. The 25-second block down to two. They get it away. Eric running for his life, and he's got some open field. And he'll run out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Brock Marion was out there to force him out of bounds. Pick up a seven yards on the play. Well, we finally see that Nevada, I think Eric White forgot what the down was on that play because he looked like he was coming right back out for another play, but he forgot he had his fourth down, so we finally get to see Bowling Green's punting team. <laughs> First punt for them tonight. Andy Tracy, see the numbers on him. His longest 48, and he's got a pretty good gale behind him. He might improve on that. Reeves from the 16. Look out. tackle down at the 39 yard line. Carlos Brooks is the man who could possibly have just saved a touchdown. 35 yards in the kick and Mike 45 on the return. Ryan Reeves shows you the explosiveness he has as a receiver and a runner. As he makes the catch, now works upfield, avoids some tackles, makes some cuts. Avoids another tackle. Breaks to the corner and puts Chris. So Chris Vargas in there now in pretty good Vargas field position. Vargas comes in at quarterback. You're right. And he has 150 to work with. They're down 28 to 3 and they need some points badly. That pass is thrown complete. Tried to get it out of bounds, but he will not. It's 81 Michael Stevens. Well, I like this Chris Vargas. Now, when I talked to him on the field the other day, I tell you, he's very confident. Uh, he just never gives up. And uh, this is a key drive for him. Even with 1.30 left to go in the half, he needs to get this team in the end zone. And they believe he's going to do it, Ron. I'll tell you, every one of this team feels like he can lead the comeback. Here they come with the blitz from the outside. Looking pass over the middle, caught 
incomplete, and it's Michael Stevens, and then a flag comes in. That's going to be a face mask against Bowling Green's Carlos Brooks. Let's wait and see if it's a major or not. Well, he threw the ball in there. This is two impressive quarterbacks that Nevada has. Oh, that's a 15-yard. The foul is on the foul. No, Ron, Chris Vargas said the other day, he said, I prefer to start, but I'm a team player. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the, the attitude that I have. And he's right. Here's the quick slant. Michael Stevens, number 81. Carlos Brooks, number 10 on the penalty. And the magic man is at work. So 15 yards added on to the quick looking pass. And the line of scrimmage now just outside the 10. And think of momentum with 114 left until the halftime. Bowling Green has controlled this first half. If Nevada can score right here, they take a lot into the locker room with it. They were down 49 to 14 to Weber State, and this young man, Chris Barnes, has brought him back to win. Here comes the pressure. Look in pass complete at the six yard line to Darrell King. Do that just a little behind him. Ron, you can just see this ball club just really kind of just perks up when Chris Vargas comes on the field. No, they're having a little communication problem, so uh, Coach Alton wants a timeout, and they stop the clock with 50 seconds left until the halftime. So we'll take a break. 50 seconds left until the halftime, and we'll be right back to Las Vegas. Look, it keeps time, and it grates cheese. While some watchmakers brag about their new inventions, it is a stopwatch and mouse trap. Loris makes practical watches. They're water-resistant with stopwatches, alarms, calendars, quick-reading graphic timers, and now the Loris Vector, a digital compass built into a precision chronograph. So forget the new Breast Spray 9000. Mmm, quartz accuracy never tasted this good. Stick with Loris, the only time worth keeping. Gotta find that girl in Jordan's jeans. Prettiest girl I ever seen. Oh, slow down, baby, you got that look. Yeah, the way you shake really got me shook. Sure. Gotta find that girl in Jordan's jeans. Everybody hates to eat and run. We'd rather take it slow. But the way this life is going, gotta grab your food and go. And with all that running round, catches up with you at last. Get yourself some Alka-Seltzer and you'll feel better fast. For acid indigestion or heartburn with headache, nothing's faster or more effective than Alka-Seltzer. Get yourself some Alka-Seltzer and you'll feel better fast. Well, you're looking at the magic man. That's what his teammates call him. Chris Vargas, a junior from Woodland, California, has thrown for almost 2,100 yards this year, 13 touchdowns. His club is in a big hole, but they've got a second down at the Bowling Green Six. Here comes the corner blitz. Going to have to get rid of it quickly. Throws it at the one foot line, Green. Ron Bowling Green's trying to blitz Chris Vargas, and I'm going to tell you something. He reads the blitz very well. They're going to use another timeout maybe here to stop this clock with 40 seconds. But he reads the blitz so well. Watch Bowling Green come with a blitz, but watch Chris Vargas. Three steps, bang, he's throwing before the blitz can get to him. And the wide open receiver, I tell you, he's got some rhythm going right now. You see his receivers making their moves. Brian Reeves, number three, breaks outside. Look how close that is to a touchdown. Kenny Burris versus Brian Reeves. And the magic man is at work. You gotta love it. College football, huh? <laughs> this guy's just come off the bench and really is gonna try to get this team going. Mike, what is it with some youngsters? It, like he said, he doesn't care if he starts or not. Actually, it's a different kind of pressure to come off the bench because normally when you have to come off the bench, you're A, behind, or two, you're needed, or, or both. You're exactly right. You, what you just said was what he said. He said he knows when he comes in and they're behind, he's going to throw every play. Yeah. So he, and the other thing, he says, I'm not looking over my shoulder because I just came in, and I know i got to dig us out of here. You could be a politician, huh? 
Deidre Combs will be the setback. The situation is 40 seconds left until halftime. The ball just inside the one yard line. And the Falcons of Bowling Green with the 25 point lead. But the pack trying to get back into this one. They go to a double wing set here. Reeves on a running play. Gets a block and he will be stopped. That is a nice job defensively, number 30, Palco. Vince, Vince Palco, number 30, with a good scrape and makes a tackle on Brian Reeves. I think they got to run right at Bowling Green. Just got to pound it right out of with 23 seconds to go here. Still got one timeout left. See if they go with Holmes this time. Nope, they go with Reeves the other way. He's going to throw. Got a man open. And caught. No, they say he caught it out of the end zone. Bear with a cover on Mike Sr. Mike Senior, 88, the tended receiver, just couldn't hook up. Brian Reeves shows the pass. Joe Bear, number four, knows he's beat, just tries to get back, got his hand up there, deflects the football. Good play by Joe Bear, recovering. Couldn't hold on to it. Now you're going to see if he's got magic or not. 12 seconds. He's got two downs, Ron. Third down, short drop, quick pass, incomplete to Stevens. Carlos Brooks is the man who tagged him. Can't throw it any better. Now I think they've got to go for the touchdown. You can't kick a field goal because you, you haven't stopped Bowling Green yet. You're 25 points behind. You've got to go for the touchdown. And now they're going to use that last timeout with nine seconds left. Well, tune into ESPN tomorrow because we've got one whale of a Saturday for you. I mean, bring your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner. This is how it goes. Louisville at Georgia Tech, 1230 Eastern time, then 13 UCLA against Georgia. That one commences at 3 Eastern. Then it's Cincinnati traveling to Bloomington to take on Indiana. The number four are ranked Hoosiers. Then there are three more to come, so you can't leave at that point. Iowa State against number six, Michigan, 730 Eastern time. Then the Buckeyes of Ohio State and Randy Ayers against West Virginia. And it'll all be capped off by Texas and Utah midnight tomorrow. Be some if that's boards. not enough for you, yeah, I, I, was say, I don't know what else we can tomorrow. do. I tell you, O.J. and Lauren uh, Matthews they stayed a little busy putting that one together, didn't they? Six games. That's a lot of thumps. A lot of double dribbles. <laughs> Okay, situation, time is back in. Nine seconds left until the halftime, as you see the adjournment by the defense of Bowling Green. And I talked about momentum for the Wolfpack of Nevada, but think of the momentum that Bowling Green would gain if they stop them four straight times inside the wall. Here it comes, fourth down. Put my money on number 10 here, Chris Vargas. Safety blitz right up the middle of the running play will be stuck. Bowling Green will hold. Artie Ming of number five decided to run the football to Dedrick Holmes. Artie Mangum with a big play. A frustrated Chris Hall. Let's go. Let's go. Another look at the play. Artie Mangum just comes untouched on the blitz. Steps up, makes the tackle on Dedrick Holmes. Big play for the Bowling Green defense, Ron. So the Bowling Green defense saying that the offense has been getting a lot of recognition tonight and also the special teams. We'll show you big play as White goes straight ahead and that will be the final play of the first half. <laughs> So Chris Alt comes off the field talking with his quarterback, Chris Vargas. We are at halftime with the score. Bowling Green, 28, and the Wolfpack of Nevada, 3. I'm a real wild wild wild. When it 
come with a clean, fresh taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. And top sound part. Bud Light delivers. I'm a wild boy. Where in the world can you find a castle, tigers, the black hole, glamour, romance, neon, a volcano, more neon, feathers, a cabaret, a tropical island, more romance, and superstar after superstar after superstar, only in Las Vegas. Fruit of a Loom has always made comfortable underwear. Now Fruit of a Loom makes comfortable clothes. Fleecy sweatshirts and sweatpants, tees and tanks and shorts. So much, so comfortable. It's called casual wear. Think of it as a kinder version of your Sunday best. Fruit of a Loom, clothes are the best of your life. Welcome back. Chris Fowler along with Lee Corso and Gary Danielson uh, filling in for Craig James tonight. 28-3 Bowling Green on halftime of the Las Vegas Bowl. All Bowling Green, Lee, and not a surprise you predicted it. No question. Bowling Green is winning this ball game because they have a tremendous advantage up front with size and speed and power. They're protecting the quarterback well. They're running the ball well. And, Gary, they showed it in fourth down. They, they stuffed them. Wait, hold on. Time out. He predicted it. He <laughs> predicted the bright lights in area. They first drive it, took right, it yeah. down. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> We saw the same game. I haven't seen a game yet when you don't win the offensive line and defensive line, you can win a game. They don't have it up front. Is Bowling Green one of the best 25 teams in the country, as Mike Godfrey talked about? I think they're, you know, they can make an argument they're a top 30, 35 team. There's a lot of good teams that are up there. They're a very good football team. To put it in Las Vegas terms, if the Wolfpack were playing poker, they'd fold about right now, down 28-3. <laughs> They've had some big comebacks in the past, none this big. Speaking of folding, Jerry Tarkanian is out as the San Antonio Spurs head coach, fired today 20 games into his career. The Spurs 9 and 11 under Tarkanian, who at age 62 says he will never coach again. The firing, a difference of expectations between Tarkanian and his boss, owner Red McCombs. Tarkanian now explaining the dispute with McCombs. I felt we could be, uh, a, you know, a 500 team or close to a 500 team with what we got right now. I thought that if we could get us a quality point guard that we could, uh, we could compete for the championship. And uh, I think Red felt that we... We can do that without one. So I think it was just a difference in opinion. And when there's a dispute, the boss usually wins. More on SportsCenter after the game. We'll come back with our bowl blitz as the halftime show continues, but also a look as we go to break at more coaching changes, college football style. Bill Dooley out at Wake Forest, and that position still open, as is Colorado State. Fulton State don't need a coach. They're out of business. Ron Dickerson, of course, taking over at Temple. We don't all have to say any longer, thankfully, that there's no black head coaches in 1A. Three head coaching changes in the SEC for 93. Johnny Majors, of course, returning to Pittsburgh, where he won a national championship. Eastern Michigan and Southwest Louisiana, also new coaches. We'll come back with a bowl blitz right after this. Kansas' is Chip Hillary trying to get it done, and we'll talk about that game and a lot of others as we continue here. Everybody wants a battery that goes the distance. But you never know when they're about to run out of gas. Only Duracell has the Copper Top Battery Tester. So you can be sure your batteries will keep going down the road. For batteries you know will last, you can't top the Copper Top. Ace is a place for helpful hardware folks and best buys like these. A Polaroid VHS videotape prepack with free film offer is just $6.99. Chicago Cutlery two-piece knife set is only $10.88. Ace Best Buy. Another reason Ace is the place. For you. Where in the world can you find hot days, hotter nights, romance under the sun, romance under the moonlight, sports all day, sports all night, superstars enjoying the day, superstars filling up the night. And action, day and night, day and night. Only in Las Vegas.
All-Pro quarterback, Dan Marino. When the game is over and the pain starts, I want fast relief and no odor. So I use Sports Cream, a strong pain-relieving rub that doesn't make me smell like a medicine chest. Sports Cream, fast relief and no odor. This halftime report is presented by Duracell Batteries. You can't top the copper top. And we continue now with the bowl blitz. An early look at the non-New Year's Day bowl games. Our first blitzer on the line of scrimmage, Steve Cyphers. Thanks, Chris. Oregon meets Wake Forest in the Poland We Do Independence Bowl, the Wake's fourth postseason appearance ever. Demon Deacon tied in John Henry Mills and wideout Todd Dixon concern Oregon, who wants to shut down the Wake's passing attack. They'll try to do it with outside pressure from linebackers Ernest Jones and Terrell Edwards, who take on All-America tackle Ben Coleman. If Oregon is forced to throw more than 30 times, the Ducks are in trouble. They do have big play man Derek Papa Smurf Deadweiler back from a broken collarbone at wide receiver. But this is Bill Dooley's swan song, and his team won't give it away. They're eighth in the country in turnover margin of plus 12. If it's close, Oregon has the edge with the better kicker in Tommy Thompson. Air Force makes a fourth straight trip to the Liberty Bowl to take on Ole Miss in a matchup featuring defense. The Falcons have inside backer Grant Johnson back from a knee injury, and they'll need him to stop the rushing of Corey Philpott. The Academy's wishbone production dropped way off the final three games, and that's not promising, going against an aggressive Rebel squad that finished third in the country in rushing defense. Air Force can't match Mississippi's speed, but Fisher DeBerry's underdog teams play extremely well in the postseason. For an upset to take place in this one, they have to get at least their season average of 240 yards on the ground, plus hold on to the football. Now the bowl blitz continues with Ivan Mazel. Physically and mentally, Kansas won't take that 0 for November team to the Jeep Eagle Aloha Bowl. Fullback Monty Cousins and defensive tackle Chris Mamalanga are healthy and will start. Coach Glenn Mason hasn't made practice rough. This is a reward for the Jayhawks, except for linebacker Hassan Bailey, suspended Thursday by Mason. Brigham Young must overcome the knee injury of quarterback Ryan Hancock. Steve Young's little brother Tom, with 30 snaps experience, will start. Young's the key. Behind him is a pitcher from the Cougars baseball team. The John Hancock Bowl. Don't be fooled by Baylor and Arizona's six win seasons. Both teams finished strong. Only one team ran the ball well against Arizona this season, Oregon State's option. Baylor, with three-year starter J.J. Joe at the helm, runs a better option. But Arizona's defense may be stronger, if that's possible, with the return of tackle Ty Parton, whose knee is healthy. Baylor gave an emotional goodbye to retiring coach Grant Taft when they beat Texas. To come back six weeks later and give him an emotional adios in El Paso is going to be tough. The bowl blitz continues with Mel Kuyper. The Copper Bowl pits Washington State against Utah. For the youth, quarterback Frank Dolce, who missed some playing time this year with a strained knee, is now completely healthy. On defense, Ryan McBride's club will have to scrap their conservative philosophy, attacking blue chip junior quarterback Drew Bledsoe with varied stunt and blitz packages. A key name to remember for the youth will be sophomore defensive end Luther Ellis. He led the whack in tackles for loss this year. In the end, though, I look for the Cougars' noticeable edge in terms of talent and depth to allow them to run away and hide. Fresno State takes on USC in the Freedom Bowl. For USC, standout offensive tackle Tony Baselli is doubtful with a strained knee. Since the Trojans have gone with a patchwork offensive line most of the year, they should be okay. For Fresno State, this is their biggest game in school history. They expect over 30,000 of their raucous fans to be in attendance. The Bulldogs have the talent base and sophisticated schemes that take this one to the wire. Another note of caution for USC, Larry Smith's club has trouble as a front runner. They haven't won a bowl game by more than seven points in their last 10 postseason contests. Chris? All right, Mel, thank you. Now, one of our regular blitzers, of course, Gary Danielson, sitting right here. So let's talk about two bowl games we haven't talked about so far. The Gator Bowl, NC State and Florida, one team peaking, the Wolfpack, another team that comes off two losses, the Gators. Yeah, right. These two teams haven't met since 1975, Chris, but the coaches have. Sheridan and Spurrier have met three times, and the story has been wild offensive shows, and I think you're going to get that in this football game, too, because of red-hot quarterbacks. Terry Jordan has been a 60% passer in career. His last eight games, 69%. And Shane Matthews, always a good quarterback. He is hot in the Gator Bowl. In three games, Lee, 9-0 and in the Gator Bowl. Uh, touchdown passes versus interceptions. You like North Carolina State? I like them because they've got more of a senior defense. Okay, but don't forget Steve Spurrier. I keep <laughs> telling you guys, he's not lost a game since he's been in Florida, at Jacksonville or Gainesville. 
Don't underestimate Steve Spurrier in a Gator Bowl. He wins. Don't underestimate Dick Sherritt. Good team. I also okay. like the Wolf Pack. Now, the Holiday Bowl, Hawaii, their first ever trip to the Holiday Bowl. Illinois, their fifth straight trip to a bowl, and they may have enjoyed those previous trips, but they didn't play very well, Gary. No, and against, Illinois, uh, against Hawaii, Illinois is going to face a team a little bit different. They call it the spread. It's four wide receiver option football. Travis Sims and Michael Carter, the guys to watch for Hawaii. For Illinois, boy, they've been dreadful in bowl games. The last two games, they haven't even scored a touchdown, and I don't know about this year, Lee. They are last, dead last in the Big Ten in total offense. They've only outgained two teams on offense. That's the bad news. The good news is they're playing a whack team. Yeah, they're playing a Hawaii. <laughs> don't forget about the Big Ten in the Holiday Bowl. They've only lost one time in the Holiday Bowl, and that's when Michigan lost to national champion BYU. So they're tough in the Holiday Bowl. Yeah, but uh, Illinois is not your average Big Ten team. Well. This is not your average year in the Big Ten. Now, we've told you about the bowl games. We're going to take it one step further. We previewed... All of the halftime shows, and I'm prepared to say that the Aloha Bowl, out in Hawaii, will have the strongest halftime show. Seven-year-old Bruno and the Love Notes will sing Frosty the Snowman, then singer Melvin lead, and finally, Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop with a Christmas medley, Lee. So. And listen, don't, don't make so much fun of Lamb Chop. <laughs> I did a Florida Citrus Bowl parade with her. You know what? She's cuter and smarter than you are. And I worked two hours with now, I'm your puppet. It used to be Lamb Chop. <laughs> there you your go. Puppet. Well, I thought I had the winner. I had the Liberty Bowl. They're going to unveil a 40 by 40 foot replica of an Elvis stamp. But I think I'm going to go with the Lamb Chop. Yeah, lamb Chop may join us out in New Orleans for our bowl coverage. We'll come back with more. I'll tell you what, Drew Bledsoe. We'll talk about the guy who's projected to be the number one pick in the NFL draft. If he comes out, Junior Drew Bledsoe of Washington State, part of our ESPN Bowl lineup this year. From Red Grange to the modern grace of Olympian Tracy Corkins, the flavor and pageantry of all 21 men's and women's collegiate sports come alive at the NCAA Visitor Center. Come celebrate the magic moments in college sports at the NCAA Visitor Center, open year-round in Kansas City. students and distinguished faculty 107 years of teaching research and community involvement the University of Nevada in Reno one of America's best small state universities ESPN's bowl coverage continues with the Weiserlock Copper Bowl Tuesday December 29th Washington State and the running youths of Utah Cougars a much-deserved bowl bid at 8-3. They had high expectations this season, and they reached them mainly because of this guy here, Drew Bledsoe, the tall, rangy quarterback, projected to be, if not the number one pick, one of the top five picks in the NFL draft if he comes out. Steve Cyphers has more on this expected future star of Sunday. <laughs> Drew Bledsoe is 6 feet 5 inches tall. He has a cannon for an arm and one standard for greatness. True measurement of, of a great man um, is that he's never compared to anybody else. Yet Bledsoe is the subject of several comparisons, from former Pac-10 great John Elway to those who preceded him at Washington State. It started in the late 70s with the throwing Samoan Jack Thompson. Mark Rippon followed, and Tim Rosenbaugh continued the tradition. But now it's Bledsoe. 
he's the best quarterback in the nation. Even now, with, with the attention that I've gotten, I, I take pride in the fact that, uh, that my expectations um, take precedence and are, and are higher than, than what other people expect. Praise for Bledsoe comes easily, what with his aw shucks humility and his awe-inspiring ability. Nice shot. That's it, Drew. That's it. And while he claims his arm comes from his mother, Barbara, who could outthrow everybody, boys and girls, in junior high, Bledsoe credits those early days spent around his dad's practices for his knowledge of the game. I knew about football like most kids just learned about, um, what, learn language. Maybe it's because of that football background that Bledsoe feels always comfortable and never afraid on a football field. Matter of fact, he admits to fear only once in his life. That happened just a few weeks ago when he and his best friend went bungee jumping. No, that's just not natural to step on the top of that, that platform and just throw yourself out into space. That's not natural. That took a, that was a big gut check. <laughs> yeah, great rotten guy. When did he do that? He did it the week following the first game of the season, but it's the possibility of the next jump that truly concerns Cougar fans. Is Drew ready to go into the pros in April in the draft? Well, why would I want to kick myself in the teeth, Steve? <laughs> he surged ahead of Rick Meyer, the quarterback at Notre Dame, and I think right now you'd have to say Drew Bledsoe has a chance to be the number one pick overall. He's right up there right now with Marshall Falk. I think my physical skills are, are good enough that I can take that step, but mentally, um, and maturity-wise, you know, I don't know if I'm, if I'm ready to, uh, to step out of the sheltered kind of college life. Bledsoe and Price say they'll discuss the future when the season is over. But when he leaves Washington State, those comparisons, the ones that measure greatness, will stay behind. I still take uh, uh, the, his high school video, and we'll be having a recruiting meeting, and I'll say, hey, put this video in. This is the kind of quarterback I'm looking for, guys. Look at this. To lead not just the great physical skills but also the intangibles yeah chris one of the key to his high ranking group let so is the fact that he has the ability to bring his team from behind he can win close games by coming from behind in the national football league scouts like that and we'll see him the 29th against their running youth so we'll come back with more halftime of the las vegas bowl it has been all falcons from bowling green in the first half take a look at zeb jackson coming at you one of the four falcon touchdowns 28 3 we'll get back back out to vegas after this New Year's with Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. Plus the comedy of Rita Rudner. Either you tell me your name or it's over. Together live New Year's Eve in Las Vegas, December 31st, the Grand Ballroom, Riviera Hotel and Casino. I had to feed him in his sleep in Trevina sleep. Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons with Rita Rudner at the Riviera, the Entertainment Center of Las Vegas. Call now for the New Year's Eve package, including room and show. Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons with Rita Rudner. Yeah, he wants to get back to work. Another delay is unacceptable. Yeah, exactly. Today. And Joyce is waging a war the therapy can't wait, huh? against the high cost of workers' compensation insurance. On my way to see a supervisor. She fights for better medical care for injured workers. He's ready. He's on crutches. He's on crutches. So they get back to work faster. I'll let him do some phone work on sale. Perfect. You'd think she'd be the kind of person who'd make an insurance company nervous. Good news. You're going back to work. Actually, thanks. She works for one. Making the right moves in a game takes quick thinking. I can't think fast or move fast without a clear head. If you use drugs, make the right move, the smart move. Get help. Don't use drugs. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. It's the holiday season, as we all know, and we want to show you part of the halftime here. Bowl Games of America putting this one together. And it's I'll Be Home for Christmas. What is billed as possibly the world's largest human Christmas tree? I'll Be Home for Christmas. Take a look.
The Mylar streamers coming down to decorate the world's largest human Christmas tree. It is halftime. We'll be back with more from Las Vegas after we pause for this. Bowling Green State University in the heart of Northwest Ohio has been committed to excellence since our founding in 1910. Excellence in academics, challenging our 18,000 students in more than 200 undergraduate and graduate degree programs. Excellence in faculty, facilities, campus activities. The result, young men and women prepared for the challenges of the future. Bowling Green State University, an environment for excellence. We are back in Las Vegas. Bowling Green leads 28 to 3 here at halftime. And let's go to the sideline. Charlene Hawks is with a very special guest right now. Charlene? Ron, with me is the executive director of the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, the man responsible for this inaugural Las Vegas uh, event, Las Vegas Bowl, Manny Cortez. And Manny, no doubt this has been a learning experience for all involved, uh, but an exciting one. How has this affected the community? Well, I think it's great for the community. The community's embraced it. This whole state of Nevada's embraced it. And the visitors from uh, the Mid-America Conference are really, really conducting themselves like ladies and gentlemen, and we love having them here. Now, I've heard talk that should this bowl grow, that you would like to make it an open bowl. Well, you know, first things first, we're, we're pleased with the way the bowl has developed so far. We're going to see how it goes over the next several years, and it may become that. We don't know yet. How about talk of a new stadium? Well, you know, we're always willing to do things bigger and better, and if we can work in a new stadium and uh, get this bowl and several other more uh, uh, prestigious events similar to this, then we'll look at it. We're always interested in building Las Vegas. Well, continued success. It's been a fun event so far. Ron? Thank you. All right, Charlene, thanks so much. And we, we do appreciate uh, his hospitality and, uh, and his committees as well. You know, Mike, I look at two numbers that just jump out at me as far as the first half. And one of the things that we talked about that Gary Blackney said had to happen, time of possession. Now, you're not going to see it on this one. Here's the other number. Look at average gain on first down for Bowling Green. Well, that 10 yards on first down, I mean, it just dictates what you can do. And you're right, the time of possession, 18 minutes, 20 seconds for Bowling Green. They've just dominated that Gary Blackney's team. But another statistic that has to jump out of that is Eric White. 13 out of 18 for 141 yards and one touchdown for Gary Blackney's offense. What was the other thing also we talked about in the first half? Time of possession. Because Blackney said it had to happen. 18 minutes, 20 seconds to only 11.40 for Nevada. At the 30. So Nevada will take it over with good field position to open this second half of play. Down by 25 points. Ron, we talked about that Weaver State game. Uh, Years ago, 49 to 14, they were down with 7:32 left to go in the third quarter. Came back to 155-49. And against Utah State this year, they were down 28 to seven at the half and came back and won the football game. So this team is used to coming back. Chris Vargas is the quarterback to bring them back. They had a tough play there at the end of the half, though. We'll see how they respond to this. Well, they get the win here in the third quarter. Sliding down at the 42 as Mangum came up and really put pressure on him. And he will make the stop. They're going to spot him just short of the 43-yard line. Well, they usually talk about Fred Gatlin being the scrambling quarterback, but you're going to see Chris Vargas. No one to throw to. Already Mangum number five. You see the pressure coming from both sides. 
There's Artie Mangum just making the tackle, along with Joe Bear. Eight of seven on first down. They go with the running play. Close to the first down. No, I'm not going to have it. Clint Frazier stops Holmes. And he'll stop him at the 44. So now third down, and they need the 46. Ron Tom Lichtenberg, the head football coach of Ohio University, was up at halftime, and he was telling me about Bowling Green. He just says they just don't make mistakes, and you, they're, you have to beat them because they're not going to beat themselves. Tom Lichtenberg, who's doing a great job at Ohio U, is going to most of the Mid American coaches are out here for this game. complete and there's Reeves and I mean Reeves was one man from breaking it for six points Bear had to catch him around the knees well he thread the needle on this pass to Brian Reeves I like Chris Vargas and I just like his attitude you're gonna watch the throw to his left there's not much air from a uh, room for a mistake here and he just puts the ball right on the numbers Ken Burris with good coverage and then Joe Bear number four makes the tackle Four for 33. Receiving for Reeves tonight. Quick out pass, and he's got it to Senior. Mike Senior pushed out of bounds on the near sideline. It's Carlos Brooks who's out there to get him. That's the fifth tackle for Brooks tonight. He was the leader in solo tackles for uh, the Bowling Green squad. Good, strong, physical corners we talked about earlier. Chris Alt, the head coach of Nevada, had a chance to talk to the San Diego Chargers, and Bobby Beathard tried to Woo him away this summer, but he decided to stay. He told me the other day, the president, he has Joe Crowley. Uh, he just feels like the relationship he has with this president, he just, it's going to take a great offer to get him to leave the valley. He's just he's very successful there. He's very happy there. I'll tell you something about Joe Crowley here in just a moment as we look at the play with the second and five. Here comes the safety blitz. Going to have to hurry. Oh, my goodness. Boy, he had him. Tom Matter dropped the football. Joe is about to become the president elect of the NCAA, which is uh, quite an honor for him. He was at the luncheon yesterday. Joe Crowley of uh, Nevada. As you look at Tom Matter, the junior out of Torrance, California, and he dropped a big pass as they had gotten the single coverage that they wanted. You talked about it earlier how you go from Division I AA to Division I. I don't think anyone's ever accomplished what Chris Hall has done here in Nevada with this move to one Division One. See the safeties creeping up at the line of scrimmage. Wants to go, he gets his safety valve, and that's complete to Mike Sr., and he is being dragged down inside the 25-yard line. Well, Paul Ferraro, the defensive coordinator for Bowling Green, has pushed all the right buttons up to this point, but I'll tell you, they're going to give Bowling Green the ball. They are going to give the ball to Bowling Green. They lobbied and lobbied and lobbied. the offense. First and ten for the Falcons. Number three, Ken Burris. Ken Burris just pulls the football away from the receiver. Mike Sr. Can he pull the ball away? He has it. Good call by the official. Sure was. Pulled it out and it came right down on his stomach and his knee had not touched. To talk about the fact that you can't, I don't think he blitz Chris Vargas because he just is really quick to get rid of the ball, but they take the football away anyway. Leroy Smith. He'll take it for a couple. And I'm going to be surprised if we see an inordinate amount of throwing from uh, Bowling Green in the second half. Not that they'll go into a shell because they throw it so well, but I think you'll see a lot of what we just saw right there to take a lot of time off the clock. Well, I know this is a comeback team, Nevada, but if they don't stop Bowling Green on this drive, if Bowling Green takes this football and drives in this game, it is in jeopardy. When, it, when you only have the ball just over 11 minutes yeah. and a half, it's hard to come back. Yeah, you can't, I mean, you just can't allow Bowling Green to continue to those long drives because they keep the offense off the field. Play action. Got him open. That's McElroy. Still on his feet, and he'll take it out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. The mock Porter had to stop him, but it's a 15-yard gain. 
You know, Mike, if you look at what has happened in the football game, two chances. The last two times that Nevada has had the football, huge situations to gain more momentum. Stopped at the goal line. We go to halftime, and right here, they're driving the football to chance for more points. We're talking two touchdowns. That's right. And, and, That's exactly right. And you got, you know, you have to look at Bowling Green and say they're opportunistic because they have been able to make the plays, Nevada not make them. Hit hard and let's go down to the sideline. Charlene Hawks, what do you have for us? Last year I had the opportunity of meeting Gary Blackney and his family for a story for ESPN. And, and I found that the football success was just half the story. His family has been through a lot. Several years ago, his wife Loretta suffered a brain aneurysm. She requires 24-hour nursing care. But uh, this family does not let anything get them down. They've been positive all through it. And in fact, uh, Loretta, she could not make it out here, but uh, Gary Blackney asked us to tell her hello since she would be watching avidly on TV today. Charlene, thanks. We echo that, all of us, here at this uh, football game tonight. I have a feeling she's enjoying what she's seen. Leroy Smith pounds his way close to the 50-yard line. I can tell you this, Ron, I've done a lot of games and there's a lot of class coaches around America, but there, I don't know if there's any two more classy than these two out here in this ball game, and Chris Alt and Gary Blackney. I mean, these are two fine football coaches. They're also gentlemen, and if you had a son out there, I'm not sure uh, you can draw from one or the other. They're both outstanding. In two seasons, what he's accomplished. 16-0 in the Mid-American Conference, 10-0 at home. The Mid-American Conference, a good conference. I'm sorry, Ron. And on the other side of the field, we've talked about Chris and the job that he has done. They go from Division One AA, and here they are, Division One in, in a bowl game. Blitz is on, pass is dropped. Slater could not hold on at the 40-yard line, and Eric Wright took a pretty good shot after he delivered the ball. Take a picture of this one because you're not going to see this often. I mean, it, it would have been a tough catch for Mark Slaychek, but you never, you hardly ever see this guy miss any kind of football. A blitz by Clayton Lopez, number six on Eric White and here's the pass you're not going to see this very often he's stumbling gets his hands on the football and usually when he gets his hands on it he has it this kick off the side of his foot into the wind and look here that thing is going to be marked out of bounds they're still walking forward Donahue with the kick and they're going to spot it down at the five, 45 yard line. That's only a five yard kick. You need to sign that guy up to coach the football. There's a lot of coaches in the stands. Might give him a scholarship. So we'll take a break. Back with more from Las Vegas after this. Where in the world can you find a castle? Tigers. The black hole. Glamour. Romance. Neon. A volcano. More neon. Feathers, a cabaret, a tropical island, more romance, and superstar after superstar after superstar, only in Las Vegas. the fun pick up a polaroid camera and plenty of film because when the film runs out so does the fun something to drink sir uh yeah make it a bud light sorry we just ran out oh um, excuse me Bud Light? Try Flight 261 out of L.A. Oh, oh, thank you. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Uh, do you have a Bud Light? Yes. Welcome aboard, sir. Great. Where are we going? ESPN's presentation of the 1992 Las Vegas Bowl is brought to you by Las Vegas Events, presenter of world-class sporting events year-round. And in part by the Remington Micro Screen Shaver for close, smooth shaves. 
Welcome back to Las Vegas. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Charlene Hawks. And glad to have you with us on this first Las Vegas Bowl. Was that an F on that builder or was that a 7? I thought it was trying to turn to 3-7. <laughs> What's happening to you out here? West hit at the line of scrimmage, and that's Belinsky. Dave Belinsky, senior from North Royalton, Ohio. Now, this is a comparison of what they've done all year compared to what they've done tonight. 431 is what they've averaged. Only 130 yards in this game so far. Pass almost intercepted. That was Burris who cut in front. He's trying to go for the cycle tonight. He's already got a blocked kick, and after he blocked it, he made the recovery. He was trying to get the pickoff there. Ken Burris covering on the play. He's got the best speed on the team. Confidence. Feels like he can match up with anybody. They put him back in zone coverage on this play, and look at the hit by Artie Mangum, number five, trying to finish off Daryl King. Third down for Nevada. Cornell West is the man who was shifting right there at the 36 yard line. Here comes the blitz. Quick throw the reads, they got it, but they're not going to have the first down. Well, Mike, you're right. He does really react quickly to the blitz. But that's a good call by Paul Ferraro, the defensive coordinator, because he blitzed them, didn't give them time to get the first down yardage. Kenny Burris again, we just talked about him, and now Nevada looks like they're going to go on fourth down. Yep, they are going to go for it with fourth down. Can't blame them. It's 932. They, they need points. They're down 28 to 3. Keep your eye on number 3, Brian Reeves. Here comes the blitz right up the middle again. The quick pass is caught. Michael Stevens. We talked about the six games on ESPN tomorrow. I hear thumps down on the sideline. Let's go to Charlene Hawk. She's got a special basketball guest. Last year was the end of the Jerry Tarkanian uh, era at UNLV, and they, the introduction of new head coach Raleigh Massimino from, whoops, I just messed up your name, Massimino from Villanova, plucked from Villanova, where you coached the national championship team in 85. Uh, you entered in a successful program here. What has the adjustment been like? It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we've been involved with so many wonderful people. The players have really responded, and I've enjoyed every minute of this game. You obviously have heard of uh, Jerry Tarkanian's firing today. What is your reaction? Well, it's a shame. We've lost a great coach in our profession, but if he uh, says that his health is not not right, uh, it's not necessary for him to coach because there's more to it than just being a basketball coach. Uh, we haven't seen the team for a year or so. Uh, does it take on the personality of Coach Massimino, or are they still a running Rebels? Uh, well, my personality is running Rebels. We, no, we're going to be the Flying Rebels. <laughs> Mike has a question for you, Mike. Yeah, as Charlene asked Raleigh where the best Italian restaurant is here in town. Where's the best Italian restaurant here in town? Vincenzo, all over. There's, I mean, there's more Italians in this town than I ever dreamt of. But uh, we go to Vincenzo's. It's a great place, and uh, it's nice and quiet. And I listen to Frank Sinatra, and, not, and I hear Tommy the sort of scream and yell at me. That's all I do. Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck this evening. Thank you very much, and it's great to be in Vegas. Back upstairs. Okay, Charlie, thanks very much. Raleigh Massimino, the, the new head coach here at the UNLV. As long as you're undefeated, you say it's great to be in Vegas. That's right. I'll tell you what, he hit along with watch. you. Undefeated, you talk, got him talking about the Italian food. Going to go on top for Reeves. Can't hold on at the 11-yard line. It was Burris who spun him around. He got turned the wrong direction first. But Burris has been busy. Brian Reeves with a good quickness to get by Kenny Burris. Number three versus three. Pair of threes. Breaks to the corner. Now, when you play man coverage like this, you're giving him a chance for some big plays, but you're also pressuring Chris Vargas. Well, what a game Kenny Burris has played so far tonight. Look at the move by Vargas. Takes it to the 31, and it's Mangum. Artie Mangum comes over to make the tackle for Bowling Green. I think he's got the first down, Ron. I'm going to step out here and say that he's got the yeah, first I, down. I think you're, you're right. Step out the limb with me, too, huh? You know, they're going to have to bring that thing all the way across the field. I just relate to you what a couple of people said at halftime. I was visiting with some folks who cover Nevada on a full time basis, and they said, We knew that Bowling Green was good. We had no idea that they were this good on both sides of the football. Sometimes when you watch tape, you just can't tell. You see them execute, but. Uh, 
this is a good Bowling Green football team. Probably could have saved them a lot of time. Just told us the first down. Well, I can see it from here. That's right. Eight minutes and 54 seconds left to play in this third quarter. It is Bowling Green 28 and the Wolfpack of Nevada three. So they get the first down. They keep the drive alive and they have it at the Bowling Green 31 yard line. They need a big play. -o. They can't take, keep taking the time off the clock. That's right because this is three straight times they've had the football in Bowling Green territory. They need a big score on against this man coverage. He's going to check off. You can see Bear faking the blitz. Now they have got literally 11 men at the line of scrimmage and they drop him off and they put it up on top and he just delivered it a little bit too quickly as Daryl King was the man he wanted and it was Bear putting the pressure on. Paul Ferraro the defensive coordinator told me about Joe Bear he said he's the best student of the game that we have just continually uh, looks over the film you're going to see number four and number five there's Mangum number five and you're going to see Joe Bear lately but he see studies the opponents there's the blitz by Joe Bear he was able to get to Chris Vargas and not allow him to get a clean throw off eighth play of the drive coming here on the middle screen they've got it complete to senior looks for a block and he is down inside the six yard line first to goal well, he'll make you pay. Chris Vargas, I like him as a quarterback because he makes you pay when you blitz him. Mike Sr., number 88 on the middle screen, a great call by Steve Hagan, the quarterback coach in Nevada. Gets Mike Sr. open. Good block by Tony Lorenzi, number 74. And they're back down in the scoring zone again, Ron. They you can't also come up empty this time. No, you're right. You can see Ryan O'Donnell, number 52, the center, also out front, blocking in the play. Short drop, looking pass, just like that. Touchdown, Mike Sr. Do you believe in magic? This is a start for him. I think they got to go for two here, Ron. This is 28 to 9. Down 19, you need some points. Chris Alt has got to be saying to himself, finally, as I just mentioned, this is the third time that they've had the football in Bowling Green territory. They have only one touchdown to show for it. They're one go, of those they're times go they were one the, foot away. Going to go for the extra point here, which would make it, which would put them down by 18. That's number 10, Vargas, who will hold. Carlick with the extra point attempt, and he's got it. And as we head to break, let's take a couple of more looks at that touchdown pass caught by Mike Sr., the sophomore out of Hercules, California. Did a good job of looking off Chris Vargas, and then you see Chris Alt. So we'll take a break. 8-13 left in the third. 28-10, our new score. Even on the doggiest of mornings, the brisk, bold scent of Coast opens your eyes. And Coast's invigorating lather makes your whole body glad to be out of bed. Come on, slow down. How many miles are we walking today? It's your idea to wake her up. Coast, the eye opener. Where in the world can you find hot days, hotter nights, romance under the sun, romance under the moonlight, sports all day, sports all night, Superstars enjoying the day. Superstars filling up the night. And action day and night, day and night. Only in Las Vegas. Sandwich improvement by Vlasic Pickles. When building a sandwich, the most important detail is the crunchy, juicy Vlasic Pickles. Because Vlasic has the taste that guarantees a successful project. Remember, Vlasic Pickles, the sandwich improvement you can do yourself. Contact wrote a book on cold medicine, then added this chapter. Contact day and night. Day caplets for non-drowsy cold relief. Night caplets to relieve your symptoms to let you rest. Contact day and night. Another important chapter in cold relief. The thing Chris does so well that I like so much about him and why I like to bring him off the bench is he, I mean, he is truly a student of the game. He has a tremendous sense of awareness on that field. 
He'll spread the ball around a little bit better with our receivers than Fred does. And you'll see him on the sideline, uh, right basically in my hip pocket, and, and he's constantly communicating what he sees and what we think. And, and when Fred comes off the field, he's right with Fred. He's like another coach on the field. Good look at Vargas on the sideline as he talks with his receivers. Mike, let me ask you this. Now, what, how much does Bowling Green's thinking change, or does it, as far as continuing to put pressure on uh, the quarterback? Well, I think they have to put pressure on him because he, he just actually, uh, if they stayed in zone, they've got to give him a lot of different looks, but they have to get to him a little bit more than they are now because if you're going to blitz... You don't think you, they'll stop blitzing. No, I think they'll, they'll continue to I think they'll continue to blitz, but I think where the big key for them is offensively, they can't get conservative. They have to keep going on the football in good mix. Now the Magic Man, here are some of the things that he's done in the four wins. Look at that deficit against Weaver State. 28 they were down. 346 yards in the, some other of his heroics. Boy, some kind of yards. 14 of 20 for the young man at quarterback now. 164 yards. Puts it out, has his man open, throws it right on the money to Leroy Smith. I can tell you, Eric White was the other youngster who was on the stage yesterday at the head table along with Chris Singleton. And uh, he really distinguished himself as well as far as the way he handled himself and, and talked about football at Bowling Green and just uh, giving a, a good image of college football in general. Didn't you think? I thought both the youngsters were outstanding. And I thought you did a good job of pointing it out. You talk about all the negative things that are written or talked about in college football. And here were two very fine examples. Oh, outstanding, yeah. Straight ahead with the running play, and it's Seth Jackson, and he's not going to have the first down. They're going to spot him down shy of the 30-yard line. Just have gone under eight minutes left in the third quarter. And if you've just turned us on, Gary Blackney right there, Bowling Green, his ball club on top, 28 to 10. Well, we've had just a little bit of a swing in momentum here. And if should Nevada be able to come up with a stop and get the football back, then I think there is a possibility of a big momentum shift. I don't uh, think he did either. Good That's job. Marion and Cutright who combined on the tackle. It is fourth down. The fist goes in the air. A good defensive surge by Nevada. Urban Cutright, number 14. Now, Mike, you remember what happened the last time they kicked. It was Donahue off the side of his foot, plus the fact he's kicking into that very stiff wind. Now, Nevada's blocked 22 kicks the past two years. Oh, they almost got that one. In fact, they may have gotten a piece of it. The ball goes straight up and out of bounds. It's not even at the 50-yard line. Brock Marion got a piece of it and they're going to spot it at the 37 yard line that's only eight yards that's a five yard punt and an eight yard punt what's that song there's a song do you believe in magic isn't there a song like that 632 left in the third but we'll take a break
ESPN's college football season goes out with flying colors in a bowl week extravaganza. The nation's top teams are put to the test beginning December 29th. Thrifty Car Rental Bowl Week on ESPN. Coming up on Sports Center, the shark swims away. Jerry Tarkanian's NBA career is over. The Knicks try to win in Boston Garden for the first time in 24 tries. And the Niners decide if Joe's a go. All coming up after the bowl. You see Bowling Green punting the football. Brock Marion, number seven. A little delay in getting the ball off, handling the football. Now, number seven's going to come into your picture. Gets a little piece of the football to set up the Nevada offense with great field position at the 37-yard line. And the mistake that, that any punter can make, and that is waiting on the snap rather than going to the snap to take like, another half second off the play. Ryan looked like he had trouble handling the ball just for a first moment. They go with the running play. And he'll muscle it for a couple, maybe three, as Nevada tried to cross him up a little bit. Mike, this is, when you include the, the play that Bowling Green stopped just before halftime, this is four straight possessions that they've had the ball in Bowling Green territory. Opportunities are knocking. That was a courtesy run, that last play. Just keep honest. <laughs> now he throws the football. Going under six minutes. Third quarter. Here's the safety valve. It's all. 30 at the 25. You know, just something about a team when they're used to making comebacks. I mean, these guys, you can see in their eyes that they just believe, and the bench believes that they're going to come back. Bowling Green has a player shaken up on the sideline, and because of the, there we go, we can now see it's 26 Day Belinsky was injured on the play. Bill right, Jones, a trainer, one of the best trainers in the country right there. He's been a Bowling Green for a long time. The white hat on. You see the end of the play. Dave Belinsky, number 26. He's in low and gets hit. Looks like in the back of the neck, John. Yeah. Huh? He could see that he was coming close to the sideline, I think, Mike, and that's the reason he came off the up. play. He didn't want to get yeah. the 15-yard penalty. And uh, Exactly he what he did. You're right. And let's go down to Charlene Hawks and get an update from her. Charlene? Ron, the guys down here on the Nevada sideline are acting like they're the ones that are up 28 to 10. Uh, they're enthused. They're even smiling down here. Yesterday, Brian Reeves, the wide receiver, told me we come together more when we're down than when we're winning, and they're acting very unified right now. Okay. Guys? Yeah, that's, that's the point, Charlie, that, that Mike was making up here. There's some teams that like that to be postured like that. But the one thing and that'll be interesting to see is because of the leadership and having a quarterback like Eric White, can they stymie his movement as far as aggressiveness in the game and just keeping things going for an offense that's awfully good? Well, the difference in the first half was Bowling Green's offense kept Nevada's offense off the field because they had those long drives. And now the difference is Chris Vargas has his offense on the field. It's interesting that Chris Alt said, uh, when he looks at Chris Vargas, he told him, he says, I always want you to be the last player off the plane because I don't want to see you. Because you're not going to scare him with your looks. He's 5'10". You know, the other, the other thing that Bowling Green has done, they've, they've finally made a couple of mistakes. The punting errors and also the kick return that they allow. Blitz coming straight up the middle. He puts it up on top, going for everything, and Michael Stevens can't get under it. And again, Vargas goes down. One of the things I asked Chris Singleton yesterday at the luncheon, the difference between the two quarterbacks, because Gatlin has a great arm. He can really wing the football. But he said, I think that Chris Vargas has a little bit better touch. He can put air under the ball and let the receivers run under it. Well, just look at the confidence on that face. I mean, he is just confident that he's going to pull out the right stops here. 28 to 10, our score. Bowling Green. Middle screen. Got it complete. He's got a lot of running room. 
Reeves is first and goal at the five yard line. Burris finally makes the stop, but it's a gain of 17. Middle screen that Bobby Bowden in Florida State has made famous. Inside throw and it just opens wide open. A good block on Artie Mangum, number five. Back down here, look for the little slant pass. They go with the running play. It is touchdown, Diedrich Hall. with an outstanding block on the play and look out it is now 28 to 16 with the extra point attempt to come can't run the ball the whole game and now the passing game has opened up the run for Nevada Carolac to attempt the extra point. He's got it. We'll hold it right here with 532 left in this third quarter. And all of a sudden, a ball game that was 25 points. Now it is 28 to 17. Derek Holmes, number 26. When you throw the ball successfully, you get people back on their heels. And then you run the football. Dedrick Holmes, number 26, for the touchdown. Good block. At number 57, Anthony Valentine. In the end zone, Dedrick Holmes. Ron, the pressure now falls to two coaches, the offensive coordinator for Bowling Green, Mike Farragelli, and the defensive coordinator now for Nevada, Ken Mizell, because that's the matchup to get the ball. Because you know if you get the ball back in his hands, he's going to make something happen. Chris Vargas. George Johnson will drop back on a deep safety for Bowling Green. The man that you have to make crack under the pressure, though, I still think is Eric White, and he hasn't shown tonight that uh, that he can do that real easily. Well, they've had so much success on first down, and Nevada's doing, with the wind at their back here, they should get to kick deep, and they should have them back down there. Now they just hold them back there down one more time with the wind at their back. Johnson five yards deep, and he can't return that. So they're using the wind to their ability, Ron. They're throwing the ball well with it, but their kicking game has really helped them. And there's Eric White. Two straight years, the Offensive Player of the Year in the MAC Conference and also the MVP two years in a row. MVP and Offensive Player of the Year, both. Saw pro scout Sid Hall of the New York Jets before the game. He was down the field watching him warm up. People are looking at him more and more. Gary Blackney feels like that he can play at the next level, the pro level. They go with the running play, and it will be knocked down for a loss. Martin Washington steps up and hits Jackson. He will not get back to the line of scrimmage. And now, in the first half, where Bowling Green averaged 10 yards per try on first down in the second half. The shoe has turned to the other foot. You're right, and I don't know if it's going to hold up or not, but one player's presence on the field, Chris Vargas, has made the other 21 players play at a higher level. Now, this defense is playing better than they played the whole game. Play action. White under pressure. He's going to be sacked. 31, Andre Howard. Their level is up. I mean, the level of uh, the sense of urgency that they're playing with right now is very impressive. And you got to credit Chris Alt, the head coach, at halftime. Good adjustments because you know both staffs see a lot of things in the first half. They're starting to pressure. Eric White a little bit more from the backside. Good play action fake. Andre Howard, number 31, with a sack. Big third down play here, third and 20. They set the screen, and it is dropped by Zeb Jackson. Now here's the here's the situation now, Ron. 
every time a team has punted into the wind, the other, except one, the other kicking team has went for the block. Now you have to go for the block again here. And the other thing about that play right there is they stop the clock with the incompleted pass, which gives Nevada more time on their upcoming drive. They should end up with great field position here if they don't block the kick. High pass from center, and he can't get it off. He's going to have to run it out to the 15-yard line five straight times now. Nevada will have it in Bowling Green territory. Now they had the block. It was a great move by the Bowling Green punter because that ball would have been blocked again. Brock Marion is the man, number seven, who would have had it. You're punting the football at home now, in your living room. You're the punter. Here's what you see. Brock Marion, so you're trying to pick up the first down. There's just no place to go. And it was Forey Duckett who made the tackle. Here's the rush again as you look at number seven. Well, he had it. He would have been uh, right on target. He really would have. One. In fact, he'd almost gone too far, hadn't he? Back to the offense. They have it at the 15-yard line. They're down 28 to 17. They were down 28 to 3. Heading for the end zone, incomplete. A pair of trees working on that one to Reeves, and he was hit by Burris, couldn't get to it. Those two may line up again someday in pro football. I think you're right. Brian Reeves versus Ken Burris, three and three. They've watched enough of each other all night. Nevada couldn't get anything going to speak of in the first half, with the exception of their first drive. And now they've come up with 14 points in this third quarter. That's how we stand. Who sang that song, You Gotta Believe in Magic? I know you're a music buff. Why do you do that right now? That's double the headed money. That's Reeves in motion. Run a little pick with him, and he got him open at the 10. Tries to cut it up against Burns, and he'll be shoved out of bounds at the three-yard line, first and goal, Nevada. Little pick on the outside. Little pick play, basketball pick. Daryl King, number nine, is going to pick the defender, number three, Kenny Burns. Just enough to clear out for Brian Reese to come open. On a Gary Blackney. You can tell that, that the furrowed brow, there's a lot more concern with him now. His team did lead by 25 points. Not right now, it's 11 points, and that is precarious. Pass caught for the touchdown. Tom Matter. I guess they believe in their offense so much. Just so much confidence. Gary Blackney on the sideline knows that his offense has to get untracked in this next series. They score so fast that that's why they probably don't go for two because two here would take them within a field goal. One takes them within four, but they score so fast, maybe they don't think they need the two-point play here. Terrellack with the extra point. You can see Bowling Green tries to get pressure up the middle. He's good and will take a break. 3.46 left in the third quarter. A new score, 28 to 24. Teach your children well. Hey, buddy. You gonna do it alone this time? Did slowly go by. When the time comes for a man to choose his own brand of underwear, more men choose Fruit of the Loom than any other brand. The reason is simple. Comfort. Because that's what real men want. Fruit of the Loom. Clothes for the best of your life. Now wait a minute. Polaroid introduces new party film. You know you make me want to shoot. Polaroid is you. Throw your hands up. Let's tear a smile now. Nothing picks up a party like new Polaroid party film with colorful new borders. So grab some new party film and... Doing it yourself can save you a lot of money if you get it right the first time. Make sure you do. Ask Ace. Stock up on EverReady Energizer batteries with a $1.25 rebate and the Fisker's three-piece scissor set is only $9.99. Ace Best Buy is another reason Ace is the place for you. 
The Remington Microscreen shaves as close as a blade or your money back. Two flexible screens let you shave whiskers below skin level. It's quick, smooth, comfortable. A great value. The Remington Microscreen. Tom Matter, the tight end on the right side. Here, your screen. Lined up man to man against Dave Belinsky. Works up the field, then breaks to the corner. Good push off. Touchdown. Confidence of Chris Vargas, the magic man. There's a look at Gatlin, Fred Gatlin, the starter. 63 career touchdowns. But this is what he was able to do tonight. Vargas comes off the bench. And these two young men are friends, but they really pull hard for each other. Ron, Guy, it's got to be a tough pill to swallow, though. Mike? He, it, it does, but he played quarterback at Carson High School in Los Angeles, and he also alternated with Perry Klein, who went to Cal as a quarterback. So he's used to alternating as a quarterback. Well, the wind has really been advantageous for him in the third quarter. Johnson will return it. And he'll take it out to the 22-yard line. Most importantly, most importantly, and in fact, I think if I were Nevada, if I get them stopped on third down, I'd even use a timeout to make sure I make them kick into the wind. Good. It is most important for Bowling Green. They got to pick up a first down here Good to point. go into the fourth quarter. Leroy Smith, number 19, has been quiet in the third quarter. Gary Blackney has got to find a way to get the ball in number 19's hands. Side. He'll be tripped up at the 25-yard line. Steve Bryant defensively. Nice tackle by Steve Bryant. And Nevada's done a better job on first down, Ron. That's where they've changed this ball game around. They're forcing second and third long yardage plays out of the Bowling Green offense. And they've been able to keep Leroy Smith quiet and Mark Slachek quiet. You're right, Slachek. We haven't heard from him in a while now. Been able to shut them both down. First half, they average 10 yards per carry. First down, second half, 2.8 yards. What a difference. Lost the throw, has it complete. Leroy Smith runs back into traffic, close to the first down. He's not going to have it. Is Joe Dunn, a freshman from Martinez, California. We'll make the stop. They're a half yard shy from where they've marked it. Well, that's the player you've got to get involved. Number 19, Leroy Smith, and 84, Mark Slaytech, because they're your offense. They're your money players. The players that'll make the big play for your Bowling Green offense. Mike, we did get an update. Singleton, we had not seen here in the second half since he came down hard on that shoulder. We've just been told it's official. He did separate that shoulder, went to the locker room, and he is putting on his street clothes now. But that's the report. So Nevada operating with one of their key people out of the lineup. Tolton's going to be all right. He's fine. Yeah. yeah. Jackson will have the first down as he'll take it to the 35-yard line. And boy, is that ever important because the clock right now shows 238 left in the third the quarter. -yard line. Good chance that uh, Bowling Green is going to have this ball into the fourth quarter. Then the wind goes behind their back. Last three possessions by the Bowling Green offense, and Nevada was able to score three times. Right now that stops the clock. So there's 212 to go and two big downs. So there's still a chance if they can hold them two downs. You're right. Mark Slajek, number 84, is the receiver he was looking for. Look at the coverage by number 23, Corey Duckett. That's a 6-4 receiver and a 6-4 corner. That's what the, uh, Nevada likes to get him in a situation because he is uh, lanky, but 6-4. A little wide receivers have a tough time because hard to throw over him. And it, of course he's working against somebody his own size in Slater. Jeff Jackson. He will have the 
first down, and that is more like the runs of the first half by Bowling Green. As Marion and Cutright combine to make the stop. On the tailback counter play, Zeb Jackson of 21, but they'll tell you, you're going to see two pretty good blocks by the left guard, Matt Foley, and the left tackle, Joe Wise. Gary Black, he's thinking of one thing right now. Give me that wind in my back. What's that other song? Wind, wind beneath my sail. Probably. <laughs> you want to, now you want to be a disc guy. <laughs> Pop by Slate Check at the 20 yard line. Mary gave him too much space. Ron, there's a flag down, though, and I think it's going to be a hold on Bowling Green. In the pack territory at the 19-yard line. We have By the way, 99, Jeff Contra, a defensive end for Nevada, limping off the field on the near sideline, and you see it is a penalty against Bowling Green. The difference between the first 28 minutes of this football game, actually 30, and what has happened in the last 13 and a half minutes is Bowling Green all of a sudden has started making some mistakes. This penalty is a big penalty because instead of having the ball down about the 20-yard line, you're back now inside your own 30-yard line. Still 137. On the offense, will get it out. Now look at this passing yardage, 141 in the first half, 36 yards in the second half. Well, he'd attacked about 30 or 40 more on with that last throw, but uh, lost it due to the penalty. Well, you're right. That's that's a 52-yard penalty, Mike. Well, that's how much yardage they lost. Jackson on the delay. Looks for a block still dancing. He'll take it to the 32. It's Lamont Porter defensively as we have 112 and counting left in the third quarter. Bowling Green is content to let this clock run to get to the fourth quarter with then the wind advantage that they have in the kicking game. It's exactly what Gary Blackney he keeps looking up at the scoreboard clock. Play action. Throws it complete. Smith. Not going to have the first down, and they have just stopped the clock with that out of bounds move at the 46 yard line. Duckett was out there to make the hit. Or Ron, I tell you, Leroy Smith is a big play player. I'm telling you. Makes the catches, picked up extra yardage after the reception to now make it third and 11. He's got six catches for 63 yards, and I mentioned to you off the top of the telecast, he's the second leading receiver for Bowling Green. Now you have to be thinking if you're Chris Hall, if you can stop him on third down, quick timeout. Call timeout, you're, call time out. you're right. Got the shotgun. Right delivers incomplete at the 40-yard line. Well, I think they missed a pass interference on this play. I, I think this was definitely pass interference. Martin is the man that he wanted. William Lackey had the cover. Take a look at this, Mike. See what you think. Well, we're going to see if it's pass interference, but it looked to me like William Lackey was riding the back. Hard to tell from that Close, angle right yeah, here. from that angle. All right, let's take, well, let's watch this punt first of all. I'd go after this one again. I'd try to block this one if I'm Nevada. You got four and, fourth and 11, so you can be offside. Donahue gets this one away, and this is his best kick of the night. Into the wind is dying a little bit, but the fair catch Reeves, called fair catch by Reeves and is made at the 21 yard line. Well, tonight's Las Vegas Bowl is just the first of many bowl games here on ESPN. Thrifty Carmel Bowl Week begins December the 29th. That's with the Weiserlock Copper Bowl. Number 18, Washington State takes on in Utah. That's 745 Eastern Time. Then on the 30th, the Thrifty Carmel Holiday Bowl pits Hawaii against. Illinois, followed by a doubleheader on New Year's Eve, uh, the Pula and Weed Eater Independence Bowl, Wake Forest in Oregon, and the Liberty Bowl Air Force against Ole Miss. Going to go long, on top for Reeves, 
one of her throw. I, I think what Chris Owen decided to do right there is let's, a, let's just air one out. We've got one or two plays left with the wind. Well, Paul Ferraro was thinking the same thing because he was in a too deep coverage, so he had safeties on both hash marks to prevent the deep throw. By the way, with the stop at your play there for a second, a couple of other games, New Year's Day, Hall of Fame, Boston College in Tennessee, 11 o'clock Eastern time, and then finally, North Carolina, Mississippi State in the Peach Bowl. That's on January the 7th. All right here on ESPN. Vargas gets it out of the flat, and it'll go incomplete to Tom Manor. But I got six ticks left on the clock here in the third quarter. The numbers on Vargas, 10 of 18, 104 yards, two touchdowns in the third quarter alone. Everybody's playing this clock game right now with six seconds. Chris Alt talking to his receiver on the sideline, Tom Matter. You need a 10 yard route here to keep the sticks moving. zero and that is the end of the third quarter and what a quarter it was for Nevada we'll take a break we'll come back for the final 15 28 24 Bowling Green why not have one for the road someone is counting on you it could be your year for lotto haven't seen Europe yet. In fact, you never know what's around the corner. If you need a better answer, you don't understand the question. A message from Bud Grine. Amazing, isn't it? In Laughlin, Nevada, a river called the Colorado has made everything so green. But what's really amazing is how little green it takes to stay in an affordable hotel right on the river. Enjoy all the excitement, water sports, and entertainment. And with over 8,000 guest rooms, maybe it's time you discovered the value of Laughlin, Nevada, where everyone's favorite color is green. Call 1-800-4-Laughlin. Make a play for the river. When it comes to camcorders, always ask the right question. Like who delivers the finest picture and sound? Who lets you record five times longer than VHSC? Who has all the answers? Without question, Handycam from Sony. All-Pro quarterback, Dan Marino. When the game is over and the pain starts, I want fast relief and no odor. So I use Sports Cream, a strong pain-relieving rub that doesn't make me smell like a medicine chest. Sports Cream, fast relief and no odor. Six months ago, I'm at the dentist, not feeling overly anxious when I heard that unforgettable word, cavities. Doctor, I said, is there any hope? Mandy, he said, you got to brush twice a day the right way. If your child brushes every day for six months with Crest, the dentist's choice, their next checkup will be great. And we're so sure you'll be satisfied, we'll give you a money-back guarantee. So I brush with Crest, and I'm sitting pretty. Crest, great checkups in six months, guaranteed. Ain't life grand? They say clothes make the man. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. No. They're only half right. Yeah, no. Canoe, men's cologne. It's one fashion that outlives the fads. Yeah. Canoe, available at Walgreen drugstores everywhere. Well, we're ready for the final 15 minutes. And if it's anything like the 15 minutes we just completed, <laughs> we're in for quite a show. The folks from Nevada loved it. I'm not sure the people from Bowling Green, though, were enamored with it. Two different halves. Diedrich Holmes on the draw. Pass by. Pass in, and he'll step out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Hack is there to make the stop. Mike, one of the things that I noticed on a passing play in the third quarter was the fact that O'Brien, who has just been wreaking havoc all night, 
And the fact that they had two bodies on him and it was a very designed situation to make sure that he got picked up because he's been throwing everything out of kilter for season. We, we, we've got to check how many passes that Nevada's thrown to how many pass rushes that we've had out of Bowling Green because they may be wearing down rushing the pass. Holmes again on the run and pushed out of bounds on the near sideline. And let's go down to the sidelines and hear Charlene Hawks. Ron, yesterday, Chris Vargas told me that he's always being asked about the pressure he must feel to live up to his comeback mistake, but he told me he doesn't feel any pressure. He found a way to transfer it to his girlfriend. You see, before the, Wave, the Weaver State game uh, last year, when he engineered the greatest comeback in NCAA history, right before that game, he placed her volleyball team number eight on his ankles. And since then, the eight has remained, and so has the girlfriend, Katie Haggard. Guys? Okay, Katie. <laughs> 14.49 left in this ball game. 28-24, and he's trying to do his magic again. They bring the blitz. He's going to go out on top. It's for Reeves, and he can't hold on as Burris had the cover on him. The other thing that's impressive about what Chris Vargas is doing is you see his ankle. Not only is he executing and throwing the ball well, he's also making a lot of great decisions at the line of scrimmage because he's checked off a lot there. He's seen the number eight on his left ankle. And they're doing all of means, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> they're doing all of this without Chris Singleton, their fine wide receiver who had the catch in the 1991 game of the Big Sky Championship. Injured his shoulder. Quick pass to middle screen. They got Stevens. Breaks off a tackle. And he's down to the 25. First and 10. And now all of a sudden, momentum is wearing blue and silver. The reason that the middle screen is open for Nevada is because all the man coverage, you have man coverage, and Michael Stevens comes off the ball. See the man coverage now? See number 26, Dave Belinsky drop out of there. Number 81, Michael Stevens comes underneath, but then look at the yardage after the catch. Again, they go with the running play. And did you see Holmes that time? He can step out of bounds. He waited to hit somebody. We sure did. Steve Hagan knows the quarterback coach, and Chris all called the plays, but they have found something in this Bowling Green defense to continue to run to the short side of the field also. They're having some success throwing the football, then running to the left side with Dedrick Holmes. Eighth play of the drive. At the 15-yard line, it's Michael Stevens. You know you live right when you throw that play because Carlos Brooks had a chance for an interception there. Just didn't break on the ball. He would, Chris Vargas was really lucky on that throw. Gary Black, he's stunned on the sideline of the, how this what, game has just turned around. I mean, what, what's going through his mind? Well, he's just trying to figure out how do I stop this snowball going down the hill because it's coming at me. The running plays are working because, as Mike said, the passing game and with the, the picking up of the blitz, and Marcus has made it work, and now all of a sudden Dedrick Holmes has become a real integral part of his offense. Well, they're running right at Dave Belinsky, who's 230 pounds, and they've got the tight end, Tom Matter, knocking him off the ball, but Belinsky comes back and makes play. Ron, we're talking about how do you stop the snowball in basketball, you can call a timeout, but football, you like to save the timeouts. But I'm not so sure right now. They need to regroup a little bit here at Bowling Green. He's going to run it. He's at the five. And boy, does he get punished at the three. His, his 170 pounds didn't carry it too much when they hit him there. But Palco is the first man that got to him. What a good decision to run the football. Not too good a decision. To, to, he need to get down just a little bit sooner. Mike, watch watch this play at the natural speed and listen. He didn't go any further once he got hit, did he? Well, they sandwiched him. Second down and goal. The ball at the three. It's Reeves on the handoff. He'll cut it into the middle and touchdown Nevada.
seven unanswered points. Unbelievable. He's trying to make it 28. I don't know what he said at halftime, Chris All, but he needs to bottle it. Well, what he said is, Chris, let's get us back in this game. It is up and it is good. Timeout on the field. All of a sudden, Nevada on top, 31 and 28. We'll be right back. Where in the world can you find a castle? Tigers, the black hole, glamour, romance, neon, a volcano, more neon, feathers, a cabaret, a tropical island, more romance, and superstar after superstar after superstar, only in Las Vegas. Take the flip, the kick, the headbutt, and the taunt. Brr, throw in that and that. Looks good. Give me the field, too. Grab the stadiums. Grab that. Grab that. Do you have anything in a clothesline tackle? Good. Give me that. Give me the wave. No, no. Yes, we'll take that. That. The dive. Party time. Let's do that and that. Not that. That and that. Give me that again. Timeout. If it's in the game, it's in the game. John Madden Football 93 for Super NES and Sega Genesis. Where'd that truck come from? EA Sports. It's in the game. Gotta find that girl in Jordan's jeans Prettiest girl I ever seen Oh, slow down, baby, you got that look Yeah, the way you shake, you really got me shook Gotta find that girl in Jordan's jeans presentation of the 1992 Las Vegas Bowl is being brought to you by Las Vegas, the entertainment and event capital of the world. Well, the celebration on the sideline by Reeves, and first time tonight, Nevada, the Wolfpack leads it 31 to 28 and kicking into the win now george johnson should get an opportunity re to return here they should run i wouldn't celebrate too soon if i'm nevada because eric boyd still has the ability to bring this team back he's in a great field position to do it short kick and they're going to take that ball all the way back to the 46 yard line hack is the man who picked it up charlene what do you have for us Ron, that dance you saw Brian Reeves perform in the end zone was originally planned as a duet. Brian and his best friend, free safety Xavier uh, Carey, who we talked about at the beginning of the, of the game, uh, who is sorely missed from the secondary, they planned that as the BNX Bowl Shuffle is what they called. But, of course, um, the X was missing. Brian, in honor of his friend, decided to go ahead with the dance, and he didn't want his friend to be left out of the game, so he put his name and number on his towel and on his ankles. Back upstairs. A lot of ankles around here have things on <laughs> delivers the pass and he has it completely Roy Smith. I think you'll see Bowling Green do just that. Maintain their poise and see if they can't take advantage of the win now. Just short stuff here and there and work it right back down the football field. Well your quarterback and your team are an extension of your coach and uh, I look for a drive here where they're going to involve Leroy Smith. They're going to try to run that tailback counter a couple times at Nevada but with the wind at their back, and it's a great opportunity for them to do anything they want to do now. Short throws, the long throws, but look for the tailback counter here. Long count, and they go with the run. Smith, there's just not much there. By the way, the reception by Leroy Smith, who just been told he's seventh of the night. That's a career high in a ball game for him. Seven receptions by him this evening. Steve Bryant made that play defensively. Steve, an all conference performer, he's been a very pleasant surprise. Has to be a very good athlete. Wow. Hey, it's cold for Las Vegas and those guys with no shirts on. Like what I was going to say about Brian is, got to be a good athlete. He's played four different positions uh, on that defense today. He's been a line, couple outside linebackers, defensive back. He's just an outstanding player on defense. Play action. And it throws that one a little high. They got Eric White out of rhythm a little bit on that series. Mike, the other thing that's happened, we have not called Sleeching for a while. 
And, and he's a guy that just, he has to be a part of that offense. Because he has been so big. They just have not had the same rhythm in the second half. But I credit again Chris Vargas with making everybody else on his football team play at a higher level. No, I, I don't disagree with you. Donahue with his kick and the fair catch called for it. Now takes a bowling green bounce. It's going to be down inside the 15-yard line. So we'll take a break. 11:33 left in the ball game. Nevada by three. Where in the world can you find hot days, hotter nights, romance under the sun, romance under the moonlight, sports all day, sports all night, superstars enjoying the day, superstars filling up the night, and action day and night, day and night. Only in Las Vegas. This holiday season, people everywhere will be coming together to spread good cheer. And what better way to celebrate than with O'Doul's, the premium non-alcoholic brew from Anheuser-Busch that beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. And O'Doul's has only 70 calories. So enjoy the holidays with plenty of ice-cold O'Doul's. you're just reacting to everything that's going on. So uh, the, time, the tough times are when you're on the sideline thinking about it. And when you're out on the field, there's no time to think. You just react and, you know, uh, just, just do it. Chris Vargas, 5'10", 170, a junior from Woodland, California. Maybe the biggest problem that Chris Alt's going to have next year, who are they going to start for him so they can bring him off the bench then? Will he react the same way as a starter? Probably he will. Probably he will, but uh, I think I keep him in the same role that Dennis, Dennis Eckers, the role. Uh, he keeps throwing the ball like he is right now. He may be the mayor of Reno by next year. <laughs> Takes it out close to the 18-yard line. It's Frazier and Dudley combined to make the stop on it. Have to credit Steve Hagan, the quarterback coach of Nevada, for this adjustment. But 213 yards in the second half, 80 for Bowling Green. So they've completely changed the first half around. Made some good adjustments at halftime. They're running to the tight end a little bit more. Good mix, but the execution of number 10 is what's getting this job done. out across the 35 to the 36 yard line 18 yards well Ron, we've seen some great games this year john barnes and his ucla team and what he accomplished in that southern cal game but i don't know if i've seen anything like this for a while where a kid comes on the field chris vargas and just takes everything over and, and against a very fine football team <laughs> coming now he's smart enough now he just pulled back to make the check off weak side corner's coming and they go with the running play Holmes. and it's burris who comes up and hits him with a head high stab that was hutchinson akili hutchinson who was creeping up on the outside he was looking at him won't show in the box score tomorrow but that decision right there turned around maybe a bad play with a blitz coming to a gain on the runs so that you keep moving the yardage. 10-11 left to play in the ball game. 31 to 28. Nevada leading over Bowling Green. Yes, the pass and it's complete to King. Boy, he gets swacked down hard by number five Mangum after the catch. Ron, I'll tell you, I watched Kevin O'Brien on this play. He's tired. I'm telling you, Bowling Green is tired. 
of rushing the passer. Look at the pass rush here. It's non-existent. And there's the throw to Daryl King, number nine. But I think Bowling Green is tired on defense. Their defensive line from Jason Fred Gatlin at the start of the ball game. Now Jason Chris Vargas on every play. They're wore down. play by Mangum. Well, if he doesn't get him, there's a lot more running room, but he'll stop him, and it's going to be a second down and ten, something that Nevada has been not been confronted with too much here in the second half. It's second and long. Well, let's keep our eye on Kevin O'Brien, number 48, on this pass rushing play. That's the young man he's going to be chasing. All out blitz this time, and the pass is caught at the 40-yard line. Wow. When it's going right, it's going right. But I just can't say enough about Chris Vargas because he's making these players play better. Tom Matter, number 80, who dropped the pass early in the game, now makes a great catch. Goes up in the air, knows he's going to get hit. Look at that. Holds on to the football. Joe Bear with a nice tackle, number four. And it's Bear who's injured. Boy, Chris all what a job this staff did at halftime. I mean, they didn't score around the point you made. They didn't score just before half. Lost momentum up against a great team on the other sideline. Came out in the second half, squandered a scoring opportunity, two, two opportunities, and he just kept them in there. But I'll tell you, when you talk to Chris all first of all, he's very confident. But second of all, number 10 is overly confident. I mean, he just has so much confidence. Look at the face. He doesn't, he doesn't even know he's in a football game. A little baby face. Isn't there a song, Baby Face? That's an older one now. I know that it's before your time. No, I, I think I, Elvis sang that, uh, I believe in magic. I'm going with Elvis. Can't go wrong with Elvis. Time of possession, this surprises me. In the second half, Bowling Green, 10 minutes, 33 seconds. Nevada, 10 minutes, 23 seconds. So it is... Uh, it is like even. We still have uh, the player down on the field. Let's take a break. 31 to 28, Nevada. know we'd run the end. Coach, it's like they stole our playbook or something. Oh. Coach, that was our big play. They're killing It's like they've got ESP. Nope. They've got ESPN. See why NFL Game Day is the show the pros watch Saturday and Sunday. I should have watched ESPN. Well, we're back in Las Vegas at the uh, first Las Vegas Bowl, and the player who's down is Joe Bear, junior from Fairfield, Ohio. And Joe was shaken up on the pass play as he got underneath the receiver, and then the weight of the receiver as he comes down, Mike, uh, you can see he's airborne, there's the hit, but he comes straight down on him. And there you see him absorb the blow. Okay, Ron. Four tackles and one breakup for him tonight. Probably the thing that that uh, they still well now they are going to bring the stretcher.
Joe Bear has had an outstanding football game tonight. Been all over this football field. It's, the thing that you keep looking for is to see this. Hoping that well, he just moved his legs, which is the best thing. Mike, I say Still, this. it's not conclusive, but uh, you know, you, just to see any kind of movement whatsoever. Training staff, obviously, from uh, from the Bada coming out on the field as well to help out the training staff from Bowling Green, and then. Turn of a coach is always for the player. And I know Gary Black right now is thinking about Joe Beer more than any football game. Joe Beer being taken to the far sideline. You see Gary Black going right over to see Joe Beer. Black, he cares about his players. Football resting at the Falcon 40 yard line. First down, the line of scrimmage is the Bowling Green 40 yard line. We'll get a report on Joe Bear for you just as soon as we can. Chris Vargas has the quickest release I've seen in a while. He really just gets rid of the ball so quickly in such a snap to the football. Caught him in man coverage, caught him in a blitz. Daryl King, number nine, with a good route. Chris Vargas. Five step drop, watch his release. Just a quick release, picture perfect throw. Ball's right on the money to Daryl King. It's behind Darnell State, number 16. Well, this is Reeves. This is their favorite play on the goal line, and it gets stuffed this time. In fact, he's going to lose a yard to the four. Hack comes up to make the hit. Right after that play was over, Chris Vargas looked at the sideline and said, Nobody's checking me on the end of this play. If I would keep the ball in the just boot. if I would bootleg this football, it would be a lot easier to get it in. I don't know with the ball on the right hash what they'll try to do, but on that left hash, he has the bootleg. Ninth play of the drive. Quick pass. Incomplete. Hit him on the shoulder pad. It was Tom Matter that he wanted. Had it a little bit behind him. Palco was uh, covering on the play. Season average 232.7. Tonight he's got 263 with seven minutes and 49 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Try some type of pick play over here to the three receiver side. The pressure. It is caught by Reeves in the middle. He is at the one and then being pushed back. Now you have a decision if you're Chris Alt. 31 28, three point lead. I think he's got to go for the touchdown. Touchdown still beat you with the field goal. Got to go for the score. A late substitution in the game, going to call timeout. Mike Sr. came on from the sideline, called the timeout. So Nevada will take it. 7-16 left to play in the ball game, and we'll hold it right here. And uh, Charlene Hawks, let's go down to you and uh, get a report on the sideline. Ron, I just spoke with the head trainer, Bill Jones, and all that they can tell us right now at this moment in time is that it's a lower back injury. As you can see, they are trying to determine more what the injury is like, but uh, we will not know for some time, and, and we will know as soon as, as uh, they give us more information. Ron? Okay, Charlene, Joe Bear, who was injured on this series, 
about four plays ago. And hopefully we'll be able to update you more before uh, we go off the air uh, with this ball game tonight. Situation is 31 to 28. The Wolfpack of Nevada leading the football game. They were down 28 to 3. They're going to go for the field goal round to bring the field goal kicker in to try to go up six points. Trying to make it a total of 31 unanswered points. Well, they field on the fourth and one just before half. Terlock with the field goal attempt. Ball is down and the kick 19 yards away is good. Well, be sure to stay tuned to ESPN tonight as our extensive coverage of college basketball will continue. Pepperdine, the Waves, takes on the Grizzlies of Montana. That's this evening at midnight. That's Eastern time, of course, 9 o'clock Pacific time. Basketball right here on ESPN. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Charlene Hawks here at the Las Vegas Bowl. Glad to have you along. You know, we should mention everybody's got on their heavy coats tonight, including us, in inordinately cold for Las Vegas, Nevada. As you look at the sidelines and now the attendants bringing out the stretcher for Joe Bear. Ron Bowling Green in the first half had 42 offensive plays. In the second half, only had 17 offensive plays. Just have to feel like the senior quarterback, Eric White, has one good drive left in him this season. A short kick again, and it's been taken by Hack and brought out to the 45-yard line. Take a look at this in the second half. Punt, punt. Loss, downs, punt, and punt. And Mike, I would remind you, we talked about in the first half about how long those drives went because the first four times that they had the ball, speaking of Bowling Green in the first half, eight plays, 13 plays, 16 plays, and then two plays, and that was a touchdown drive as well. well they need a drive here out of the senior quarterback from Maslin, Ohio. They set the screen in the middle. That's going to be down. In fact, they're going to say incomplete. They got a break if they caught an incomplete pass because they would have lost three Yeah, they would have yards. lost yardage. No, they're going to call it a completed pass. And they will continue the clock. So now, after a conference by the officials, they will spot the ball back at the 41 and a half yard line. So it is a loss. I've never seen that before. One guy calls an incomplete. Came running in, and they still give him the completed pass. That's one that Eric didn't want, I can promise you. Mark Slaycheck. When will he get the next football thrown to him? Well, that's him in motion to the open side of the field. They throw back to the short side. That is complete to McElroy at the tight end, close to the first down at the Nevada 48-yard line. They haven't won 16 straight MAC games, not being a good football team. This team is still very capable of taking this football down the field and scoring, winning this football game with 622 on the clock. But the player that has to lead him, Ron, Eric White, has to get the ball down the field for this Bowling Green offense. It complete and guess who? Slave check who we were just talking about, but they got to bring back in the offense is there at the 36 yard line and it's good for 11 yards. They keep him quiet for a long time, but Eric White, good call by Mike Farragelli, the offensive coordinator, drives out and gets separated from Brock Marion, the all conference defensive back, but a nice throw by Eric White. Good, good rollout pass to get Eric White started again. Over the middle, tipped and almost.
almost intercepted. And was Caspers, the guy that I talked about back in the first half, who was 6'7", he's got several knockdowns this year, and that's one of the reasons they put him in the ball game. Well, Nevada know, almost got the interception on that, Mike. An interesting thing, Ron, you're right. If we could show the left tackle and the left guard of Bowling Green, they are so far off the line of scrimmage. They actually should be called, should be a penalty, because they are so far. They're trying to draw the advantage of pass protection, but look how far the left tackle's off the ball. If we could show it. Look how far back he is, Ron. The advantage he has in pass blocking, Joe Wise. See how far back he is? Yep. Over the middle. Incomplete and then almost intercepted by Lopez. Sledge has the man that he wanted. Clayton almost made the pickoff. You know, for Lopez, he really is getting his baptism tonight. Now, he plays on special teams. So as far as game action as a defensive back, he really hasn't seen that time. Well, he's playing for Xavier Carey, who was suspended for tonight's game by Chris Alt. There's the throw. Overthrew it. Almost intercepted Clayton Lopez. Bowling Green, they converted the first six third downs tonight. Since then, they're only two of nine. They're going to convert this one. White will take it inside the 25 and down to the 24-yard line. Good call. Quarterback draw. Gary Black, the staff with a good call. And the Bowling Green offense now a little life in the huddle. Number 21, Zeb Jackson trying to just get him moving a little bit. There's the quarterback draw. Good block by the center, Cal Bowers, number 63. She wrapped that ball up. There's your score, 34-28. Ryan McElroy moved. Mike, I saw him move. Let me ask you something. I know he went forward in a stance, but he's tight in. He wasn't covered. He could go. He can move and go back, but he's... I don't know if he was down and he moved after he was down. We'll see what the call is. Dead ball. Ball start against the offense. He was in a three-point stance, Ron, and he went forward. Mm -hmm. See, 89, the tight end. Already in a stance, he moves forward. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good call. Shovel draw situation here. Had some success with a draw. White gets his pass. Almost intercepted. And let's go down to Charlene and get an update. Ron, good news on Joe Bear. Uh, his arms and legs, full movement there. Uh, but uh, the team physician... Rick Barker told us that he is his lower back is swollen in the lumbar region. They don't know if there's a crack in the bone because it is so swollen. He is in a lot of pain. His parents came down to be with him, though. They're uh, in the locker room right now trying to determine more of the injury. Char Charlene, before you go, I just want to understand one thing. We're talking about no paralysis at this time. That's what they're saying. That right? is correct. Okay, That's good. Correct. That is indeed good news. Thanks for the hustle. 5.15 left to play in the ball game. Going for the end zone. He's got a man. Inside the 10, first and goal, Bowling Green, that's McElroy. They ran the wheel route on the sideline. What that is is the one receiver will run a post, then Ryan McElroy will come around on a corner route, and he really ran a nice route. But this ball by Eric White is thrown right on the money. Steve Branch, what you have is a linebacker against the tight end, and there's a reaction of Eric White trying to pull off a little magic of his own. That's right. Three catches for 49 yards for McElroy. Here they come with the option. Jackson, and that is great defense by Nevada as the Wolfpack will set him down for a loss. Back outside the 10-yard line. Duckett is the man who led the attack. Ran the option plan for him. Duckett just wouldn't have any of it. Now you think down here, the two key players, do you use Mark Slaycheck with his 6'4 frame and throw the face? Yes. Or do you take Leroy Smith out of the backfield and throw the football to Leroy Smith? Tenth play of the drive for Bowling Green. At one time they led 28 to 3. Right now they're trailing 34 to 28. Glitch is there, pass for the end zone. Complete. 40 
Duckett with a great defensive play, Ron. That ball was thrown there on the money. Mark Slaycheck with his hands out. Corey Duckett with just a good defensive play. Watch the play. Two six four players going at it here. Watch his right hand come up. Left hand over, strips the ball out. Slaycheck was about to catch a touchdown pass. You're right. Look at that left hand, stripping the ball. He took, took his left hand and just drove him through the arms of Mark Slaycheck. Good play by Forey Duckett, the six foot four, 195 pound senior. Third down and goal. And here comes everybody. Pass incomplete as White just had to dump it. Both coming after the quarterback. Comes down to this fourth down play because Bowling Green has to go for the touchdown. Chris Alden, excited coach on the sideline. Well, you're excited. Who do you go right to talk to? Quarterback, Chris Vargas. 3.59 left in the ball game. Bowling Green with the fourth down and goal. Something you have to remember right now is Bowling Green still has three timeouts, so it's a long time on that clock. 3.54 on the clock, three timeouts. Here's the pass deflection, Lamont Porter, number 49, over the middle as they're trying to go and to Hankins. Hankins was open. You could, you could see Hankins over the middle. There's a coverage on Slaycheck. He's being held by number seven, Brock Marion, so he's out of the play. Now, Bowling Green's defense must come up with a stop. Holmes going down before going out of bounds. That's the last thing he wants to do. And Dave Belinsky made that tackle. You know, he was injured earlier in this ball game. I'm glad to see him back out there. Ron, another point to remember with 3.36 on the clock and the clock's moving. Bowling Green has blocked the punt already tonight. Timeouts remaining to this one. Bowling Green with three. Nevada with two. Nevada doesn't want to use a the timeout. They just want to get that thing on fast forward. 3.20 left in the game. I can't see him running the football again, too, because I know they want to run time off the clock, but Chris Vargas, they, they are going to run the football. Get in the backfield and he'll spin off the tackle and bring it out to the 17. It's O'Brien who got a hand on him. And now a timeout is being called by Bowling Green. And they'll stop the clock with 3.06 to play. Big third down. So let's take a break. 34 28, the Wolfpack. I want him to get the best specialist he can. When this man was injured on the job, Mary Keedy helped save his eyesight, but she's not a doctor. To the plant. She found this man a ground floor apartment. It's not a simple injury. But she's not a real estate agent. You seem fine, okay? And she showed this CEO new ways to control expenses. Keep doing it. It's gotta be very The fact is, Mary Keedy is one of many nurses controlling insurance costs. I mean the bottom line. At ITT Hartford. You're gonna be out of here in no time. That's right. She works for an insurance company. A twin blade from Bic? What's in it for me? I'm a Bic man! This is new? A twin for normal skin and a twin for sensitive, right? I'm a Bic man! Yo, well, I'm a sensitive guy. So I tried it. Bic man! It was good. It was I'm great. A big man! The new Bic Twin Select. Normal, sensitive. It really blew me away. It made a big man out of me. I'm a big man! Big man. Welcome back. Don't forget, after the game, Sports Center Jerry Tarkanian fired, scores in the NBA, and also the Day One Field signing. Well, the numbers on Nevada tonight on third down conversions six of ten. Four of six this half, actually. They were kind of void of them in the first half. You let Chris Vargas throw the football here? Yeah, yeah I would. Run the ball in two successive plays. Picked up seven yards. It's third and three. Bowling Green has two timeouts left. 
because Mike Bowling Green is good at blocking the football as well. the line of scrimmage but before the ball was snapped it appeared as though Nevada had a player move so let's see well they're both pointing at each other preliminary indication foul foul is on the Belton So they're going to mark it off against Bowling Green and the first down that goes with it. Penalty seven against Bowling Green, 57 yards, three against Nevada for 10 yards. Now you want to keep the clock running if you're Nevada. Holmes gets racked up, and you can see him cut it back upfield when there was nothing there. Last thing in the world he wants to do is go out of bounds. Timeouts remaining, two for Bowling Green, and they just called one. Takes him down to one timeout left. So we'll take it with him. 2.35 left to play in the ballgame. We'll be right back. When it comes to camcorders, always ask the right question. Like who delivers the finest picture and sound? Who lets you record five times longer than VHSC? Who has all the answers? Without question, Handycam from Sony. Contact wrote a book on cold medicine. Then added this chapter, contact day and night. Day caplets for non-drowsy cold relief. Night caplets to relieve your symptoms to let you rest. Contact day and night, another important chapter in cold relief. Hot coffee and steak in front of strangers at 30,000 feet? <laughs> Not till I switched. Now I fix it and, and forget it. That's good. When people are watching you this closely, you just can't be worried about your dentures. That's why I fix it and and forget it. Fixident holds stronger than any other adhesive. It even stands up to the hottest liquids. Fixit, Grandpa. He never would have tried this with his old adhesive. <laughs> For the strongest hold you can get, Fixident and forget it. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. United. Come fly the friendly skies. Welcome back to the Las Vegas Bowl as we kick off the bowl season here on ESPN. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Charlene Hawks. Glad to have you with us. What has been a, an incredible turnaround. Bowling Green led this football game 28 to 3. They could do no wrong. 2.42 left to play in the game. They're down 34 to 28. They'll run it again. Out to the 31 is Holmes. And now Bowling Green has just called their final timeout of the ball game. It's going to be a third down for Nevada. They need to take it to the 33-yard line. You let him throw here, Mike. 2:35 on the clock. Yeah, I, I put the ball. In, I, I believe so much in this quarterback, Chris Vargas. I don't think he could do anything wrong. Next, immediately following the ball game, Sports Center. You don't get many athletes like Chris Vargas that you coach. Guys with the ability to make other people's play at a higher level, but to make plays. He just makes plays. Look the calmness in his eyes. He's just a calm player. Coach is going crazy, but Chris Vargas is just very calm. Chris Alt tells him what he wants done this play. One of the things you'll be talking about on uh, Sports Center, immediately following the ball game, the firing of Jerry Tartney. He was the basketball coach, of course, for years here at UNLV, and then went on to San Antonio in the NBA. Great basketball coach. Coach defense, and, uh, they, they called them the running rebels, and they were great on offense, but I'll tell you, their keys to Tark's success was his defense. Third down. going to have it. Boy, that was Hack and also Mangum, who really had a stick on him. Dave also Belinsky yeah, as well. Yeah. He made the pop run, and he finished it off. Now you take all the time you can take 
if you're Nevada to punt this football, if you're Bowling Green, you got to come after this kick. You got to try to block this punt. Remember Kenny Burris before number three came through on the inside. So let's keep our eye on Kenny Burris. What they're going to do is run it down, take a timeout now, take as much time off. They didn't want to delay because of the five-yard penalty. Well, be sure to tune in to ESPN for NFL football on Sunday night. Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins will look to clinch a playoff berth on Sunday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time, as they battle the New York Jets down at Joe Robbie Stadium. ESPN's coverage of that uh, Sunday night NFL game begins at 8 o'clock Eastern time. So join us for that one. The Jets against the Dolphins this Sunday. Ron, if you're coaching the special teams at Bowling Green, you got to remind your players that you can't jump off sides here. Standing to the AFC East, Buffalo. Already clinched the playoff spot, but you see Miami and there, the Jets at 14. 153 left in the ball game, 34 to 28. Nevada on top. Lester is the man who drops back in punt formation. Gary Blackney. Does he have the block on or does he have the return on? He's got the block on. I think he does too, Mike. Kenny Burris is going to try to work his way free up inside again. Good pass. You're coming up the middle. Loses the ball. It is loose at the 15-yard line. And there is still life in Bowling Green. Duckett makes the recovery for Nevada to make sure that nobody picks it up and goes in for an easy touchdown. What a football game. An emotional roller coaster for the coaches. Another look at this punt. Oh my, just went right through his hands and hit him in the face mask. Now the Bowling Green offense versus the Nevada defense. at the four-yard line. First and goal, Bowling Green. 12 yards in the play. And now White is 23 of 38 passing in the ball game. Wow, what a football game. I just can't get over how well this game is. has been played by both these teams and the big plays on both sides of the field. Alexander and Smith are the setbacks. Straight ahead with Smith, that's Lamont Porter who steps up into the hole to make the hit. Ron, one good thing is that Bowling Green takes some time off that clock and does score the touchdown, takes time away from Chris Vargas on the other sideline. Well, there's no doubt about that, and you can believe it. Bowling Green is thinking about that. It is second down, and the ball is just inside the three-yard line. Timeouts left. Nevada has one. Bowling Green's out of timeouts. Pass is incomplete. He wanted Leroy Smith. It is third down. Mike, the first half ended with one heck of a goal line stand by the team who is on offense right now. Can Nevada come back and duplicate that to win this football game? Well, that's what they're going to have to do, isn't it? They're going to have to stop them right here. And Eric White has to come up with a play for Bowling Green. The senior quarterbacks made them all year. 107 left in the ball game. Leroy Smith, left side, hit at the line of scrimmage. He will get nothing. It's going to be fourth down, Bowling Green. Cut right is the man at the bottom of the pile. Wow. Ron, I think it's some type of play where you roll out Eric White to the right side. <laughs> Try to get Slaycheck on that out route to the field here. Let's see where they line up. Mark Slaycheck. OK, 
Okay, keep your eye on the fullback here. We shifted the tackle. Keep your eye on Leroy Smith there, the fullback. In the flat. That's who he's looking for. Dumps it. No. Touchdown. Hankins. Ron, that's a special play that Bowling Green runs. They shift the left tackle to the right side, and they did all kinds of shifting there to try to make you think they're going to try to throw the ball to Mark Slaychek. It opened up Leroy Smith and David Hankins. Now, uh, the extra point attempt to break this tie. And it's a lead. is good. And he is bowling green with 22 seconds left on the clock. Going back on top by one point, 35 to 34. Good defensive series by Bowling Green. They gave their special teams a chance to block the kick, and they didn't allow the kick punt to off. Now look at all the shifting here. Now with the shifting, Nevada has to be thinking the ball's going to go to Slaycheck. You got him moving in motion here. Now they're trying to get the fullback in the flat. All they're using Slaycheck is as a decoy. And there's Hankins at the back of the end zone, wide open. Leroy Smith was open. A good play call by Gary Blackney. And here's the play that allowed Bowling Green the good field position. The pressure they put on the punter, Steve Lester, with the rush. Special teams has been the key tonight. I think it really has, and it the, actually the punting game was the Achilles for both teams in this night. It, it turned, it helped turn it around for Nevada, and then as it turns out, it puts Bowling Green back on top with 22 seconds left. I wouldn't count out Chris Vargas yet. No, I wouldn't seconds. either. He, he's proved too many things to us, and he he does have one timeout left. Squinting a little bit more down there now. He's been uh, so calm. West from the two-yard line. seconds left and it was George Johnson George Johnson on special teams tonight I know of three individual tackles that he's made he returns kicks he does a little bit of everything as one of the players said called him on the, the field the other day they call him the Sarasota exploder uh, well you can just see the how emotions have changed in this game one side was all fired up another side was down now it's just reversed we've seen a good hook and ladder in a while Deep over the middle, tipped, tipped again and incomplete. And it was Staten who made the initial tip of the football. Then O'Brien also rushing on the passer that time. Ron, you hear it said so many times, you know, when you watch a football game and you, I hear people say, you know, you hate to see one team lose a game. Uh, this game's been well played by both these teams. Emotions have run high and it's just a game that they give everybody that's come out to this field tonight the national televised audience their money's worth. Let me tell you something. Key play in this ball game. When Blackney went for the fourth down and scored a touchdown back earlier in the ball game. And you made the point. He thought he was going to need the points. Pass the pass over the middle. Running for his life to get out of bounds, and he does. He's senior. He'll stop it with one tick left on the clock. Got a very generous like timekeeper. <laughs> to leave that one second on the clock, but he needed to get down right away because the chains moving would have stopped the clock. And look at the secondaries. They prepare for Hail Mary. Well, that's what it has to be right now for Chris Hall. That's their third and final timeout. Sports Center coming up immediately following the ball game. Hart fired today at San Antonio. A lot of action in the NBA tonight and also a Nate Winfield signing his contract. It just doesn't sound good. Tark fire tonight. It just 
when you go through it when you're fired as a coach I mean you know the agony it causes and uh, you know you just I hate to see anybody relieved of their job and coaching and especially a, a friend like Jerry Tarkanian. Mike the numbers on Vargas tonight 281 yards he's 24 of 39 two touchdowns and that's since entering the game he entered the game with 754 left until halftime. But the play by the head coach of, uh, of Bowling Green extremely important at the time it might not have seemed like much but when he went for it on fourth down and they threw the throwback pass to the quarterback for the touchdown that's the difference in this football game. Well, he's got three players four players back on the 10 yard line guarding the goal line they're so deep you can't even see him. Vargas throws it for all he's worth. And he got a long one. Ball is tipped, knocked away, and it is Bowling Green who has won the first Las Vegas Bowl here in Las Vegas, Nevada. So, from Mike Gottfried and Charlene Hawks, Ron Franklin saying so long from Las Vegas, Nevada, and this first Las Vegas Bowl. What a comeback, but it was not to be. It is the Falcons 35 and the Wolfpack 34. Now, Sports Center. All right, thanks, guys. Welcome to the Sports Center. We've got a brief version here because we're headed for basketball. I'm Gary Muller along with Bill Patrick. And the question for a while today in San Antonio was did Tark the Shark throw in the towel or was it vice versa? Well, the Elmer Fudd look alike. Ah, he's out of there. He is gone, and it's been a traumatic day and a lot of turnarounds in San Antonio in the course of one day. Last year, the Spurs waited until January to dump coaching legend Larry Brown. This time it took just 20 games. Nona Red McCombs had given Jerry Tarkani in the axe. McCombs made the decision after a meeting this afternoon to eat the final three years of Tark's contract at half a million per year. We realized that uh, this is a different game than the college game. Uh, he realized it. All of us realized that this is, this is uh, truly and totally just a difference of opinion of the expectation level of the talent that is here now. At 62 years old, the noble experiment of Tarkanian's first venture into the NBA just didn't work out. As he put it, I'll never coach again. I'm all done. I'm having some real health problems. You know, I, my blood pressure is high. I, I've had chest pains. I'm, I'm having a hard time living with the losses. The losses really eat at me. Losing was an unknown experience for the Shark, who devoured opponents mercilessly at UNLV, riding atop the poles constantly in the last three of his 19 seasons there, including the 1990 championship. Although the Spurs are nearing 500, Tarkanian had already lost more games than those last three seasons with the Rebels combined. He only lost more than 11 games once in nearly two decades in Vegas. His winning percentage of 83.7, the highest in NCAA Division I history. With Terry Cummings lost for the season, Willie Anderson out for at least another month, and Antoine Carr hobbled until January, Tarkanian felt the most influential absence on his team was the release of former point guard Rod Strickland. I felt we could be... Uh, a, you know, a 500 team or close to a 500 team with what we got right now. But I thought that if we could get us a quality point guard that we could, uh, we could compete for the championship. And uh, I think Red felt that we, we can do that without one. So I think it was just a difference in opinion. Rex Hughes takes over for the time being, and he doesn't necessarily agree with his longtime friend. We can't concern ourselves with point guards. We got to concern ourselves with winning basketball games. Hughes may have a point. His old 